history that has gained in prominence and intensity the past few years with the success of Colorado State. Number 24 team in the nation, the Rams, taking on Colorado today. And hi, everybody. I'm Terry Gannon, along with former Denver Bronco Reggie Rivers. And Reggie, what Sonny Lubick has been able to do in Fort Collins is nothing short of amazing. Last year, 10 and 2, the win in the Liberty Bowl. But now, a major question mark at the quarterback position. He's going to have sophomore quarterback DJ Bush starting for the very first time. And he doesn't have much experience, but the coaches really like his mobility, his accuracy, and his decision making. And although he, he's going to be nervous today, he's going to have wide eyes. Those have to settle down and get ready to play. On the other side of the ball, CU has Craig Oaks at quarterback, and Craig Oaks has a guy who's come on, come on, he's got the starting job last year and found his way to the, to the lead of it and has become the leader of this team, and now he comes back and has to find a way to get the, the victory this year. And the loss last week to Fresno State to open up the season, you cannot overstate the importance of this game for Gary Barnett. He's been under a lot of heat this week in Boulder. Doesn't want to go two consecutive seasons 0-2. That hasn't happened since 1979. The series record, Colorado has dominated, but Colorado State has won the last two. The Rams and the Buffaloes next in Denver. Terry Gannon back with Reggie Rivers in Vesco Field at Mile High, the new Mile High Stadium, whatever you want to call it. It's a gorgeous, brand new $400 million facility here. And getting set for the rivalry, Sonny Lubick and Colorado State. He's won five conference titles in the past seven seasons and not much success before he arrived in Fort Collins, Reggie. There really hasn't been. It went a long, long time before they were able to get any success, but Sonny Lubick brings it to the table, and now they've won the last two games in this series. All of the pressure right now is on the University of Colorado. They cannot start this season at 0-2. Colorado won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so the Rams will receive to open up the ball game. Pat Rome will handle the kicking duties, at least the kickoffs for Colorado back deep. Pete Rebstock and Dexter Wynn, two very dangerous players, return men for the Rams. Colorado, once they resumed the series in 1983, won 10 of the next 11 games. They dominated throughout, but the Rams have won the last two. And we're underway here in Denver. Win from his own three yard line coming back to the near. Tripped up a nice tackle made at the 18 yard line. Roderick Sneed tripped him up as he returned it out 15 yards. DJ Bush getting the start here. We talked to him last night. He didn't have any kind of false bravado, any arrogance about him. But he said, you know, I know what. I'm going to be under here. I know it's a new stadium. I know that it's a huge game, but I think I'm, I'm going to be okay. And I think what Coach told him is you don't have to go out and be the hero. All you need to do is go out, be solid, don't make mistakes, and that's what he's going to focus on doing today. They're banged up at the tailback spot. We'll get to that more in just a moment. But here comes Henri Childs, the transfer from Kansas across the 20 to the 21-yard line. He gets the first carry of the game. And the starting lineups, the offensive line for Colorado State. Show it has had a chronic back injury, and that's the only question mark in that line. Dreyer, the only man who did not start last season. It's an experienced offensive line. Dreeshan, they love him as a young kid. Ochoa, one of the best tight ends around. Rebstock, the big play man. And Dallas Davis, after being out last year, only played two games because of the injury. He is back, and he's awfully fast. Play action on second down out to Dreeshan, and he drops it. So Joel Dreesen, the redshirt freshman from Fort Morgan, Colorado. The coaches love him, but he drops his first pass. Defense for Colorado, Tyler Brayton, Justin Bannon, probably the best, if not defensive lineman, maybe the best defensive player for the Buffs. Tufts, Sykes, and Wall Ruth. Jay Sean Sykes had the great sophomore year. Not a great junior year, but had a terrific game last week. Strickland, Robinson, Lewis, and Jackson. Michael Lewis, awfully good at the strong safety. Third and nine now in the opening drive for Colorado State. And there's contact. That was Bannon. Just as we sing his praises, he comes across and makes contact. <laughs> well, you know, you get to the first kind of little minor pressure situation in the game. A third down there. Fire of the snap. Offside. On the defense. Five-yard penalty. 
Repeat third down. Steve Juszczyk and his crew working this game. Steve from Broomfield, Colorado, not far from Denver. Yeah, Colorado's thinking they can go three and out here, so he gets a little bit anxious. They still have an opportunity. This will be a big, big play for Colorado if they can stop him here. So third and four. Childs, the lone setback. Straight drop. He almost slipped. And this one picked off. Strickland has it. He's going to get to the end zone. Donald Strickland with the interception, bringing it back 30 yards. The nightmare scenario that D.J. Bush must have thought about once or twice making that first start, and certainly Sonny Lubick thought about it. And here we go. You know, the, the one thing that Colorado absolutely needed, the one thing CSU absolutely did not, Colorado needed to make a big play defensively. They had to get on the board first, and they do it now. You know, Dallas Davis is, is the re intended receiver. Strickland steps in front of it. A great play by Colorado. We'll see how CSU responds. Jeremy Flores on for the extra point. It's up and it is good. So Gary Barnett's squad has had a history of tough starts, of not starting well, having to come from behind. They get off to the great start with the interception. And Strickland, the junior from San Francisco, bringing it back 30 yards for the score. They get the first touchdown, which they absolutely needed. Now, Colorado State is going to be in the position of having to decide, do we stick with D.J. Bush no matter what happens, or do we get Bradley Van Pelt on the field? And I think they stick with him right now. They have to give him a chance. Now you look at this play again. It's just a quick out pattern on the right hand side of the screen. Bush drops back. He throws it. It's underthrown a little bit. That gives the defender a chance to step in front of it and take it the distance. No one's going to stop him after that. And I know for, for DJ Bush's standpoint, he wants to come out and he wants to start things well. He's been fighting this quarterback battle all camp long. And now to come out and have that be the second pass that he throws in the game, I think it's tough for him. And what must be going through his mind right now as you look at Bradley Van Pelt, the transfer, after all he's been through in camp and winning that position on the first series to throw the interception. And, and not only that, to have it brought back for a touchdown. And Van Pelt on the sideline thinking, you know, maybe it wasn't bad in camp losing that spot. I might get a chance here. What do you do as the coach? Do you let the guy stay in and fight through adversity? Or do you say, hey, we're going to give our other guy a shot? Ripstock and win back deep as they were just a moment ago. And Reggie will find out in just a moment what Sonny Lubick decides. You got to believe that for the sake of his confidence, you, you bring him back in. Yes, you def I think you bring him back in at least one series. He settles down. He does good in this next series. He'll be fine. Rome's kick this time sailing out of the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20. And D.J. Bush will get another shot at this Colorado defense. But what an open, you know, Colorado starts the other way last time. We talked to these coaches for Colorado. They said they really want to be balanced offensively 50-50. All that gets thrown out the window when you get behind because you have to start passing a lot. Really important for the defense to come out, set the tone early, get the first score on the board, and get Colorado in the position where they can kind of control things a little bit. Child the lone setback now as the Rams start first and ten from their own 20-yard line. A long count. Going to hand it off to Childs. Fighting his way ahead for maybe three. Henry Childs, the junior from Shawnee Mission, Kansas. Transfer from Kansas. A look at our Pacific Life game summary right now. The first thing is that Bush for CSU, they need to win the turnover battle. They might be tough with a new quarterback, new running back, as we've already seen, but they have to have fewer than CU. Second one, Bush be solid. He doesn't have to be a superstar, but try to be consistent, not make mistakes, as we've already seen, and rush for 75-plus. They have to get some Brent, some running game going today. Redstock and Hills at the near sideline. Second and six. Treason in motion. Child straight up the middle, had a hole initially, but that closed quickly. Across the 25 to the 26, Matt McChesney was in on the stop along with Aaron Killian. Back up outside linebacker. So it'll bring up third and a long three. And we just have gotten word that Jason Sykes, the inside linebacker for Colorado, is on the sideline. They're checking out his ankle. 
got banged up on that previous play, previous series, excuse me. Third and three. Play action. Bush throws. Got Treason his tight end across the 30. Close to a first down, but what a tackle by Michael Lewis. And this is going to be close. It looks from here as if they got the first down. And I was interested in that series of plays right there. If I was Coach Lubick, I might have tried to get him a throw on first or second down rather than waiting till third down and have the, his, his next throw after the interception be a high-pressure one. But Bush responds well to that and gets the first down. Good high percentage play, though. Yes, it is. The tight end across. They did get the first down. Joey Capari in motion. Henry Childs, the carry. Good yardage, fighting his way up to the 37 yard line. And don't forget, September 10th, regular season premiere of Monday Night Football, and it's right here at Invesco Field. The Giants taking on the Broncos, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. What do you think about the Broncos? Had the preseason game last night they right here? They looked pretty good last night. Terrell Davis especially looked good. It's good to see him back and healthy. Yeah, the questions at, at running back, who's going to play, who's not going to play, maybe those answered last night here. Second and four now for the Rams. Straight drop, plenty of time, and the under through Jose Ochoa, his big tight end. Corey Massoni on the coverage. Ochoa, one of the best around this senior out of Silmar, California. 22 catches last year. First team all conference. Look at his numbers from a year ago. I wonder if we're going to see Pete Rebstock on this one. We have a third and four, third and five situation. Um, Pete Rebstock is the go to guy. You wonder if he's going to be the one who gets it on this play. Third and a long four, they're going to call it. There's Rebstock in motion. Your pressure is Bush and overthrows Childs out of the backfield. Masoni was in there in the backfield to pressure DJ Bush. That's one of the things that CU said they were going to do. CU said coming into this game, they don't bring a lot of pressure, but when they do, they want to make it on third down plays. Mazzoni coming in from the left-hand side, putting some pressure on, making Bush a little bit uncomfortable, so he makes the overthrow and they don't get the first down. And who knows, he may have been thrown to Repstock that time. He was right in back of him, but Either way, it was underthrown or overthrown. Cedric Cormier, Roman Holloway, back deep, and they are awfully dangerous. Hollowell with the 77-yard return last week against Fresno State, and he just did get that one off. Takes a Colorado bounce and is going to be down out near the 25-yard line. A punt of 38 yards, no return. The Buffs take over. Sophomore Craig Oaks at the helm as Colorado takes over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The numbers last week saw them there against Fresno State, but the critical turnover late. The give to Chris Brown on first down out across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Brown, the sophomore out of Naperville, Illinois, getting the start because Marcus Houston is out with the injury. And the starting lineups for Colorado, an experienced offensive line and very quick. Andre Girard, no doubt about it. He will play on Sunday afternoons in the NFL in the backs and receivers. Graham, one of the go-to guys at the tight end spot. And, of course, John Minardi, the guy they go to in critical situations. Brown, a big hole up the middle this time. Out to the 38 and a first down. Good block by Justin Bates. The left offensive tackle, a gain of 10. Defense for Colorado State, very good at the ends. Peter Hogan, Jeff Grau, perhaps the best defensive player on this squad. Heald gets the start at the outside linebacker spot along with Vickers and Eric Pauley. And the Gallimores, the identical twins at the quarterback and free safety, Sprague and Dexter Wynn rounding out that secondary. First and ten for the Buffs. Brown along the right side, and this is exactly what Gary Barnett wanted to do, to open up, perhaps with a lead, and uh, be able to run the football, Reggie. It's very easy to be committed to running the ball when you have a lead, even if it's only a seven-point lead early in the first quarter. But that's what Gary Barnett wanted to do. They want to be balanced 50-50 at the end of the game. But getting the lead gives them a chance to control the clock a little bit, control the pace of the game. 
Gary Barnett's offense last week only 66 yards rushing but of course much of that because they were having to come from behind over the middle complete and another first down for the Buffalo the big tight end Daniel Graham with the catch 33 catches a year ago for Graham a lot of people compare him to Shannon Sharp in the speed that he has, the catching ability, the blocking ability. He could have declared himself eligible for the draft this year, decided to come back and play his senior season at CU. And now CSU is in the position of they have to stop this drive. Can't let CU march it down the field. Have to get the momentum back. Gain of seven. They move the chains after that. Craig Oaks setting the in. Bobby Purify in, gets the carry, and now to the 40-yard line. He's near another first down. So you've got Chris Brown getting the start, but Bobby Purify, the sophomore of Colorado Springs, another man who will fill that spot at the tailback position for Colorado today. Watch the blocking here on the left-hand side of your screen, how the guys just get faced up, squared up, boom, knock him out, and then he breaks the tackle, which is, a, which is a good job on his part. You expect a running back to break one, but just nice movement all around by the offensive line and the whole team on Colorado's side. Marcus Houston out with a groin injury. They did an MRI earlier this week, and he does have a torn upper thigh muscle. Here's Oaks to throw on first down. Complete inside the 35 to the 34. And he's got Derek McCoy, the sophomore out of Thornton, Colorado. CSU has got to find a way to do one thing right now. They've got to stop one play, whether it's one incomplete pass, whether it's one tackle for, for no gain, something. Right now, CSU has not had a negative play. Gain of six. McCoy with the catch as you look at some of the scores from around the country. But how impressive has this offense been so far in this first drive? Chris Brown now in at the tailback spot. He'll get the carry straight ahead and powers his way down to the 30, close to another first down. Now, for all the talk that we've had this week about how this series has changed, this is the 73rd meeting of these two teams. Colorado has won 53 of them. CSU won the last two. This game, the way it's setting up right here, looks like the traditional matchup between CU and CSU. Well, if you go around the country, as much as Sonny Lubick has changed things for Colorado State as the third and one comes up right now, I mean, Colorado plays in the Big 12, and uh, your conference gets your respect up straight ahead for the first down across the 30 and they will move the chains once again yes but to go back to that a moment recruiting always comes up in a rivalry like this Reggie in-state recruiting and you got to believe even, even with the success Colorado State has had Colorado doesn't take a back seat to anybody in this state recruiting ones yeah Colorado is always going to be perceived as the big school where they get the best players and they have the best coaches, they have the best facilities, best of everything. CSU has changed that a little bit in the past few years. Play action, Oaks to throw. He's got Brandon Drum, his fullback out of the backfield. And knocked out of bounds inside the 25 by Dexter Wynn. Now look at how the two schools have done in the state of Colorado. You look at the left-hand column, CSU always consistent, 49, 47, 47. That's the number of players they have on their roster from Colorado. CSU, when Barnett got here in, in 2000, he started, or 99 rather, he started recruiting more heavily in the state. Now they have 43 guys from the state here. Yeah, they had gone national in terms of their recruiting, and Gary Barnett came in and said, I want to focus on the kids in Colorado and then go elsewhere. Chris Brown breaks one tackle. And may have another first down. He should have. But this ground game for Colorado has been extremely impressive so far. A gain of eight for Brown. Fresno State last week was able to shut down Colorado's ground game early, which then the turnovers got them behind. They had to pass it. So we didn't really get a chance to look at Colorado's ground game. They obviously are very talented up front, doing a good job of moving it. And CSU right now desperately needs to make a play defensively. Bobby Purify in for Chris Brown, who was shaken up on that last play. First and 10, John Minardi in motion. Purify, huge hole. The cutback, he's still up. Bobby Purify to the near sideline, to the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado. There's a flag down in the end zone, but it came in late. Right now, CSU is just not able to compete 
with the up front blocking. Look at the blocking and how everybody gets cleared out of the way. Purify comes through, makes a good move on the one guy, breaks one tackle, which is, as I said, you expect a running back to do that, breaks another one there, and then outruns everyone to the end zone. CSU right now is not just not doing anything to slow down this CU attack. The touchdown stands. 15-yard penalty on sportsmanlike conduct. Excessive celebration. 15 on the extra point. Well, in the average buff fan is saying, cut us some slack here. We've been struggling. We were 3-8 and eight <laughs> last year. We lost the first week. Let us celebrate a little bit here. <laughs> exactly. So Jeremy Flores, he'll be backed up to the 25-yard line. 35 yards on this extra point. Problem. The interception return and the 18-yard run by Bobby Purify. The Buffs are rolling early. Another look at the touchdown play. Purify just doesn't get touched by anybody coming through the line. Then breaks the one tackle that he has to and outruns everyone to the end zone. Right now, Colorado is untouchable by CSU. They are just doing everything right. CSU has not yet done anything right. You know, emotion plays such a large role, especially in college football. And the early, well, they were down early against Fresno State last week. As you look at Rebstock and win back deep to receive this kickoff. And I think emotionally they were just drained at some point. Man, a nice comeback, almost one. But then Jason Sykes called a players-only meeting early in the week and said, guys, we cannot let this happen again. And Gary Barnett said, we can't let Fresno State beat us twice. And emotionally, Colorado much better off early on in this one. Brohm's kick sails out of the end zone once again. They'll bring it out to the 20. The ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler. We're reinventing the passion for driving. Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments, discover the power of Pacific Life. And Circuit City, we know how you feel. That's why we're here. We're with you. Well, Jay Sean Sykes is back on the field. He was off for a little while. Looked like he had an ankle injury, but now he's back on the field. Sykes with 13 tackles last week and a sack against Fresno State. Bush to throw. Through a crowd and through the hands of Jose Ochoa is tied in. We go to Times Square Stadium and check in right now with John Saunders. Terry with the Coors Light update. Miami of Ohio at Michigan. John Navarre hooks up with Marquise Walker. 39 yards downfield. A great catch. Brings it down to the two. Three plays later they go into score. 7-0 Wolverines. Terry. All right, John. Thank you. John and Terry will keep us updated throughout the day from New York on the action in college football. Second and ten. Omri Childs trying to get outside, but run out of bounds by Jay Sean Sykes. You get a look at the speed of the middle linebacker. And it doesn't look like he slowed down by that ankle at all. You know, he had a phenomenal game last week in the loss. And here's another guy who could have declared himself eligible for the draft, came back for this season. He has incredible speed. You watch him as he runs around the field. He sees the play and just, boom, takes off and sprints toward it. And you're not going to outrun him to the outside. Makes the play on the sideline. And he'll make a lot of plays today. Gary Barnett called it his best game as a Colorado Buffalo last week against Fresno State. The defensive coordinator didn't want to go that far. They think he's going to be so good. They don't want to limit him. Bush to throw to the near sideline. Almost picked off. Great coverage. Joey Capari, the intended receiver, but it was broken up nicely by Roderick Sneed. In Vesco Field at Mile High here in Denver, a gorgeous Labor Day weekend. Terry Gannon along with Reggie Rivers, 14 to nothing, Colorado. It has been all buffed so far. The 30-yard interception and return early in the game by Donald Strickland got them going, and then Bobby Purify an 18-yard run, and that's where we are right now. And Colorado State's in the difficult position of deciding what they want to do at quarterback. Do they stick with Bush or do they bring in Van Pelt? The bad news is that they're down by 14. They need to pass it a lot. Van Pelt is more of a running quarterback. Nice play by Joey Huber, the punter, to get that one off. And the fair catch at the 33, 42-yard punt. No return. Colorado takes over when we come back. 14-0 Colorado right now over Colorado State in the Rocky Mountain Showdown. The 73rd meeting between these two teams. 
Sonny Lubick's team needing to get something going, especially right now on defense, getting a stop. Don't forget tonight, wrap up our college football triple header. Number 23, Wisconsin, taking on number seven, Oregon, right here on ABC Sports, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And Joey Harrington, the uh, the billboard in uh, Manhattan doing its job. Everyone talking <laughs> about Joey Harrington from Oregon for the Heisman. First and ten for Colorado. Chris Brown on the carry to the near side. A couple of tough yards up to the 34. Maybe the 35. Brown, the sophomore out of Naperville, very physical runner, of course, signed with Northwestern, came over with Gary Barnett to Boulder. It's still very early in this game, but this really is a critical drive for CSU. And I think they need to, to take it in inches. If they can find a way to stop CSU or CU on one play, then maybe try to stop them on two plays, but they've got to slow them down a little bit. Oaks all alone, and down he goes, and there's the one play you talked about. Patrick Goodpaster, the red shirt freshman out of Harbor City, California, got there first. And that's what they need. They need something to rally around, something to say that, hey, we're doing a good job. They come on the rush here. You got three guys beating the, their, their blockers at the point of attack to get in to put pressure on Oaks, and he has no time to do anything. They get the sack. Now they have something to grab onto and say, okay, we can make some plays against Colorado. Let's see if we can make another one. Goodpaster's had the Achilles problem the last week or so. Was out a couple of practices. Some concern as to whether he could go. But a loss of eight with that sack, it brings up third and 16. Orland Johnson in that tailback. He get, gets the catch out of the backfield. Hit hard at the 33. Back to about the original line of scrimmage. Cortland Johnson, the senior out of St. Louis, who's had an ankle sprain, and he was questionable coming in. You know, it's interesting, the dynamics of this game and the way it starts out. Both teams undoubtedly believe a little bit of the hype about this game. CSU probably believes a little bit that they're not well matched against CU. CU probably believes a little bit that they're better than CU, so, or CSU. So when the game starts off this way, they both start believing that a little bit, and it's easy for CSU to go in the tank. Now we got a fake. Whoa. Oh, my. Go figure that one, Reggie. My, that could become a crucial mistake if CSU can convert. What are your thoughts on that? I, you know what? I think it's, on, in some ways, it's a smart play because what they had was an uncovered guy down at the bottom of the field. The, the punt returners, or the punters saw it. They make a call at the line. They try to throw it out to the guy, but they throw it incomplete. You know what? And yeah, no, this, he's throwing it to number 80. And the, re the defender number two right there, McCoy, who's, or, or Woods, who's running over, he was the guy who was coming out to cover him. You know, that absolutely could be the, the break that they were looking for, the Rams. And Trials straight up the middle with some power running. The ball's loose, but he was down. And I think what we know about that punt, it probably wasn't a play called by the coach on the sideline. It's one of those automatics. If you ever have a wide receiver who is just flat, uncovered, no matter what the situation, you get the ball, you throw it to him. But in that case, you have an incomplete pass and turn it over in a bad situation. And you, yeah, you've got a no situation at that point, too. Time and, and clock and, and what the game has been to that point. 14 nothing. you're Colorado. You've been moving the football. you got to punt it away, fine. But now just a huge break for Colorado State. Andre Childs up the middle inside the 25 and close to a first down. He should have it. So Colorado State now has, they have the big sack that sets this up. Two plays later, they, they force them to punt. They get the, the mistake that CU makes. And now they have a chance to put points on the board and make it 14-7 like none of this other stuff ever happened. Rubstock back in for Chris Pittman at the wideout spot. Sonny Lubick has been a part of this rivalry for a long time. Nine years as head coach, also as an assistant coach. Childs bouncing outside. He's got a hole. Henry Childs inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. And flags at the end of the play. Maybe a face mask. Got a big block from Joel Drayson, his tight end. This could be shaping up into the game that we thought it was going to be. And all it takes, I mean, momentum is so powerful in football. For CU early, the momentum was the interception. For CSU, the failed fake punt. Incidental face mask. 
On the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Let's look at the play right at the end of the play. You'll see a guy come in and grab the face mask and hold on to it. Robinson grabbed it. You can grab onto the face mask. You have to try to let go of it as soon as you can. It's inadvertent, it looks like. So it's first and goal from the three. Bush under center. Rolling out to Dreesen for the touchdown. Joel Dreesen, the red shirt freshman who dropped the pass early in the game, gets to the end zone. And Joel Dreesen doubles up. He had a great block on the play right before that. Now catches the pass to score the touchdown. Look at him, it's just a bootleg. He's going to fake it to the wide or the running back. Coming to the left, rolls back out to the right. Nobody's covering Dreesen. Kent Naughton, the senior out of Burlington, Colorado, on for the extra point. Splits the uprights. Whether it was called from the sideline or not, guess who's going to get blamed for the, the fake punt? Of course, Barnett will get blamed for it. I have a feeling that this one was just an on-the-field decision, that you have a receiver that's uncovered, you throw the ball to him. Turned out to be a poor one. Well, it's <laughs> I'm sure that if Barnett was probably on the sideline screaming, don't throw it. You know, it's one of those that, though, if you complete it and the guy runs against the first down, then, of course, it's huge. It's a smart play. Everyone wonders. Let's, let's take one more look at that fake kick. So what, what they have, well, we can't see the receiver outside, but he's just uncovered. There's no one there. You see the defender running over at the last minute to get out to him. And McCoy is saying, ah, if you could have just gotten the ball to me, I would have been gone. Yeah, they snapped to the up man, and the, the throw was just not even close to being on the mark. But in your own territory, after you've dominated the game to that point, your defense has been good. You've got a first-time starter at quarterback on the other side. All of those factors going in. Guess yeah. what? And, and plus, you're putting the ball into the hand of your up back. It's not like you have a quarterback who's back there who he sees an open receiver. He hits him. This is the up back. He doesn't throw the ball a whole lot. He's all of a sudden going, oh, my gosh, there's an open guy. I'm supposed to get the ball and throw it to him. And it just doesn't work out. But a big break for CSU. Jeff Babcock, the redshirt freshman out of Tampa. And a kick it deep to Roman Hollowall and Clyde Sorrell. chance to return this one and they'll bring it out to the 20 for the buffs and their next series you knew this would be a good one oh, last couple of years at least it turned out to be last year's edition Colorado in many ways dominated the football game which was right next door at the old mile high but four big plays that's what won it for Colorado State and the Colorado coaches all week have talked about the fact that they cannot give up the big play well they created a big play with the fake punt there a moment ago. Brown across the 20 out to the 22. A rivalry that has grown in stature and certainly in intensity in the last couple of years. And that is, of course, because of the success that Colorado State has had. If Colorado still dominated, that would probably be in the same situation. Yeah, there might be 20,000 people here instead of. 70 some odd thousand. Oaks four for four for 25 yards so far. They've kept it on the ground for the most part. Ramp showing blitz. They pick it up out to McCoy and it's underthrown. And we mentioned Sonny Lubick has been a part of this rivalry for a long time. We asked him to describe the transformation, what this rivalry has become in his mind. I remember our first game that we played in, in Boulder. The score was 21 to nothing. And I looked at the clock. And there were still seven minutes left in the first quarter. And I'm thinking 21, that's 84 plus. You know, as far as I could figure, I was hanging on. But it seemed like ever since that ball game, uh, we went and played them a couple other times after that, played some very close games. And especially having won the last two, uh, the preparation was, you know, yeah, I think we can do this and we'll do that. Now our team is working a little pressure on us, kind of like we're expected to win. 
On third and eight, Minardi with a catch over the middle, but he's not going to get enough for the first down. David Vickers, the middle linebacker, hit him as soon as he caught it. The momentum keeps shifting back and forth in this game. Colorado State able to come out, push Colorado three and out. So now they got to bring on their punt team again. Maybe they're going with the same strategy, uh, un leaving one of the receivers uncovered. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they'll try to throw the pass again. <laughs> Dallas Davis back deep at his own 25. A dangerous return man. He missed most of last year with the injury. Medical red shirt. End over end punt. Davis with a move. He gets outside and he is called down. At the 28, the ball is loose, and we'll wait and sort this out. An official threw his hanky at the 28. There's also a penalty marker. I think he threw the beanbag down to show that's where the ball came out. It, it looked to me like his knee touched the ground and he was down, but the officials didn't blow the whistle and say that he was down. Yeah, it appeared to me that he was down. Look where there's... You get a beanbag and a penalty marker right next to each other. It, is, it appears they're going to spot the ball where the second guy picked it up and ended up with it. A hold against Colorado State. 49 yard punt, 10 yard return. Illegal block in the back. On receiving team. 10 yard penalty. On the spot of the foul. First down. See if we can figure this out. And watch as he catches this ball, and he, he does a good job of making the very first guy miss. And then fighting. Well, the beanbag goes down where he first caught the ball, but now, as he, boom, he's, he's down, down right there. Now another beanbag is going to come into the picture. Well, we don't see it. Yeah, another one, trust us. Yeah, right there. <laughs> there, there there's the other beanbag. And so now they were going to spot the ball, it appeared, where now this guy went down near the sideline. Beanbags, flags, everyone on the field. <laughs> In the end, it's first and 10 at the 13 for Colorado State. Bush still in the game to give the Childs nothing doing straight up the middle. Joey Johnson, backup middle linebacker, in on the spot. And it, Johnson, a guy who really had a good game a week ago, had eight tackles against Fresno State. Manning also in on that stop. Pretty good twosome. At that linebacker spot, though, for Gary Barnett with Jay Sean Sykes, who they are now moving up to the edge at times, too. Moving him up to the line. Second and eight, push to throw. Rebstock with the catch at the 25 yard line. Nice catch. This is exactly the sort of play that the Colorado State coaches say separates DJ Bush from Bradley Van Pelt. They're both good quarterbacks. Both do a very good job of delivering the ball, but Bush is more the, the drop back delivery. Watch Rebstock as he runs just a basic hook here, settles down, balls low and away from the defender. Very good pass. Rebstock, the senior of Inglewood, Colorado, the two year starter. Childs, the carries, popped. As soon as he crosses the line of scrimmage, Justin Bannon hit him hard. Now, when we talked to Sonny Lubick yesterday, the one thing he emphasized was, if we can run the ball, we'll be okay. He was, he was really, that was his sole focus. Well, so far, they really haven't had any success at running the ball. Final seconds, ticking off the clock here. And the first quarter, Sonny Lubick's club coming back with that touchdown to make it a 14-7 game here in Denver. We'll continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. About to start the second quarter here at Invesco Field at Mile High in Denver. Terry Gannon along with Reggie Rivers, 14 7 Colorado. DJ Bush, the sophomore, getting his first start at the helm for Sonny Lubick and the Rams. Some struggles early on, but then the fake punt, the turnover, the Rams put seven on the board. They're right back in this thing. Second and 10 at the 26 coming up. For Colorado State. Watch Sykes with his hand down on the right hand side of the screen. Colorado shows blitz. They bring it and Repstock can't hold on. That it wasn't a great pass from DJ Bush through the hands of Pete Repstock. 
That ball looked almost like it might have been just barely tipped at the line because it kind of had a weird trajectory as it came out. Got a little bit of pressure on him, did see you, and uh, was able to force him to make a bad pass. So now they have third and ten, which is not a situation you want to be in as an offense. Numbers on Redstock last year. Eric Hill, number 85, now in at the whiteout spot. Bush just three of ten for 19 yards and that interception returned for a touchdown. Rebstock's got it though at midfield. To the 49 of Colorado. Pete Rebstock with the catch. Rebstock is their go-to guy. Last year had 46 catches. And you watch him on this route here. It is really nothing fancy, just kind of a straight, deep slant route or a post route almost. Just a nice throw and catch. And you watch Van Pelt, great, or Van Pelt rather, Bush sitting back there. He's got great protection, delivers the ball well, a little bit behind him, but a good delivery. I bet you the coaches did that once or twice in camp, <laughs> no exactly. doubt. So first and 10. Just outside the 49, Bush under pressure and more. He goes down at the 39-yard line. Sean Tufts with the sack, and let's go back to New York and join John Saunders. Well, Terry, in a game that looks like the orange and white game, Syracuse at Tennessee, Casey Clawson going deep, 37 yards to Dante Stallworth for the touchdown. That's the first play from scrimmage. Tennessee jumps in front. 7 nothing, Terry. All right, John, so the Vols not wasting any time. Loss of 11 on that sack, so it's second and 21. Bush never got the exchange. It's one of the rare, rare times that the center jumps off sides. When the center snaps the ball and everybody else is sitting there, <laughs> usually... <laughs> you know he had the you wrong snap. Watch jump. the center. He's gone. He's like, hey, come on, let's go. Let's get this show on the road. <laughs> Mark Dreyer, a sophomore out of Brighton, Colorado. Sometimes it happens the other way, where everybody jumps offside except for the center. He, he's still sitting there with the ball. Those poor linemen. The only time we really talk about them, say their names, is when something like that happens. That's true. David Dreyer's got the same name as Ice Cream. He can't be all bad, right? Third and 23. Childs alone set back. Straight drop under pressure now over the middle. Rupstock with a dive. Did he hang on? Yeah. Still short of the first down, but what a catch by Pete Rupstock. Great catch. And you know, it's an interesting, you know, in an offense, you don't have a whole lot of plays that are designed to get you 23 yards on third down. And I thought I found it interesting. CU came with a blitz on that one. You would think you'd play off. They're not going to get 23 yards anyway, but they come with a blitz, and it works out for CU in this case. So five completions for Bush so far, three of those to Pete Rebstock. Joey Huber on to punt Roman Hollowell back at his own 10 yard line. Average almost 25 yards of return last week against Fresno State. Not going to have a chance to get to this one, at least not without a fair catch. The short punt up at the 16-yard line. Only a 29-yard punt. No return. The Buffs take over. Back in Denver, a few clouds rolling in here on what's been a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Next week here on ABC Sports, Carolina and Texas, good way to get things underway. Michigan and Washington, the second game in the triple header, and then the Irish taking on Nebraska. Had a great game last year in South Bend. Should be another good one this time around. Next week here on ABC Sports. Oaks throws out into the flats, complete across the 20 to the 21. John Minardi, who's been kind of quiet so far, but the senior out of Laguna Niguel, California, with a catch. Watch Minardi on this play. He just runs an out, out route and gets out of bounds, gets about five yards on the catch. And you know, it's interesting, they gain about five on this play. Their first drive, they went 80 yards for a touchdown. Their next two drives combined for a total of five yards. Minardi, the second leading receiver last year. Second down, give to the fullback Brandon Drum, who does not get a lot of carries. Junior out of Anchorage, Alaska. Ahead for maybe a couple. I know it 
points early, but critical play coming up for Colorado State here defensively. They can get a stop, get the ball back on third and two. Cormier in motion. Oaks the short drop out to Cormier. Going to get ahead to the 31-yard line. He's got a first down for Colorado. Colorado State did something there they don't ordinarily do. Normally, they got to be a flag in there somewhere, Rich. Yeah. I guess they're not going to throw one, but a little extracurricular on the sidelines. A little conversation. They're all English majors in school. They like the language. <laughs> Ordinarily, Colorado State goes with what's called a zone blitz, where they bring an extra rusher, but they play zone coverage behind it. That time, they came with a man blitz, where they were blitzing, playing man coverage. Didn't work out for him because the guy who was covering uh, minority man there wasn't keeping up. Look at the numbers. Almost 100 total yards so far for the boss. Bobby Purify, who had the touchdown early. Another big game. He's got a first down for Colorado out to the 44-yard line. Aaron Sprague made the stop. Look at Purify and the hole that he's got to run through. I mean, this offensive line is just huge. I mean, nobody is touching him until he's eight or ten yards from the line of scrimmage. It's the hole he had on his touchdown run, too. Made one man miss. That was it. The line did the rest. First and ten at the 44. Purify looking for that hole, not going to find it this time. He's going to lose one. Now a time for our Aflac trivia question. Aflac. There you go. Colorado State has won five conference titles in the last seven years. Which school has won more conference titles during that same span? Could it be Southwest Texas State, my alma mater? Well, let's no. Oh. That's that's an emphatic no. I'm not sure we've won five games in, in the past seven <laughs> years. You're the man around town here, though. I'll tell you what. You're in Denver. Best parking spot that I have gotten in years <laughs> at a college football game. Driving up with you. <laughs> Quick out. Nice catch. The one-handed catch initially by John Minardi up to midfield. That's a nice one as a receiver. The ball's coming in. You say, should I catch it with two or should I catch it with one? <laughs> you know, this is definitely a one-handed ball. Minardi, uh, you know, again, he's the leading receiver for this team. Probably a guy who will be playing on Sundays next year and makes a great grab there. Third catch of the afternoon for John Minardi. 6'2", 195 pounds. Pretty good size. And Oaks starting to get his rhythm. Portland Johnson, number 27, now in at tailback. Caught by Cormier. Inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Great throw, heck of a catch. It's a great throw to Cormier. And you watch Cormier at the top. Here's a guy who came out of high school. He was the number one rated receiver in the nation, despite the fact that he'd never played receiver. He was a quarterback in high school. Justin Gallimore on the coverage on the side. Just a, a kind of a deep slant right, a deep in. Nice job of adjusting to the ball and making the catch. Never know how you're going to come back from an ACL tear. Cormier had the great freshman year, but then the devastating injury and uh, coming back awfully strong. First down. Head to the 35, Cortland Johnson. Gain of about three. Better than 76,000 here at Invesco Field at Mile High as we are in the second quarter. Colorado State and Colorado. The Buffs with the early lead, and they have a 14-7 advantage at this point. Terry Gannon along with Reggie Rivers here. And that number 76, what, 125, unofficially right now. We'll get the official count a little bit later, but uh, would be the largest crowd ever to watch a college football game in the state of Colorado. Nothing doing this time in the backfield for Johnson. Adam Wade, the outside linebacker, tripped him up and held on to him. Adam Wade comes on the blitz from the left-hand side of the offense and just comes through untouched. Good speed coming in and may almost takes the handoff. You know, he could have gotten there a little bit earlier. Makes the tackle behind the line. You know, on those attendance numbers, do you and I count as spectators in the attendance? Uh, we are not paying customers, I don't believe. Unless you paid to get in, I'm not sure. But I. They didn't charge you? So the numbers on Oaks, awfully good so far. That great. Over the middle, got his tight end. To the, oh, look at him go. Carrying defenders. 
Shades of Mark Bavaro. We got a flag on the play as well. Defensive backs hate tight ends who can actually run with the ball after they finish with it. Daniel Graham, certainly one of them. He certainly can. Most tight ends, after they make a catch, if you go by and you run past them close. It's a face mask. On a defense. Five yard penalty. From the end of the run, first down. You run past them close, they're going to fall down. Running with the ball is not their specialty. Daniel Graham gets the ball. He's fighting, fighting, fighting. Finally, the face mask at the end. Yeah. They, sometimes that's, I, I don't know, that's a. It's certainly it's a incidental, one, but that's what, yeah. that's what they call it. But they got to call it for the safety of the players. Colorado State, the least penalized team in the country last year. Purify another big hole inside the 10 down to the 6. I don't know what Purify did for these offensive linemen, <laughs> but they have a commitment to say you are not going to be touched. Look at the hole that these guys create for him. This is, I mean, holes are not this big in real life. This is incredible. I mean, not to take anything away from Bobby Purify, Purify because he's doing a good job of running the ball, but that offensive line is really moving the line. Gain of 15 for Purify. It's first and goal. They'll place it down outside the six at the seven-yard line. Formier in motion. Draw the up back. Hit as he crosses the line of scrimmage, going nowhere. Eric Pauley. Number 33, the outside linebacker from Conway Springs, Kansas. Hey, we cannot not mention that Drum just got a carry there. He doesn't get many of them. When he went to high school up in Alaska, he rushed the ball a lot. And since he's been here at uh, in Colorado, he hasn't carried the ball many times. So every time he gets it, we have to take a moment and say, hey, props to Drum. Second carry. Got one earlier in the game. <laughs> Celebrated high school recruit out of Anchorage, Alaska. Got one yard on that play. Second and goal. Purify cuts it back inside the five to the four. And that's it. David Vickers, number 37, met him there and got some help. Purify didn't make his dues payment to the to the line in time for that play. I'm impressed with the way that Colorado's kind of bounced back. They start off with the early momentum, take off with it, lose the momentum, and then they looked a little flat to me when they started off this drive, but maybe that was just they were really focused and really settled because they're now marching down the field and probably going to punch this thing in. Double tight end set now. Quinn Sipniewski in, the sophomore out of Granger, Iowa, and they're going to talk things over. Time out. Come over, talk to Gary Barnett for the moment. Third and goal from the four when we come back. Colorado up by a touchdown here. 6.15 left until halftime. Third and goal from the four as a soft rain has started to fall on the field here in Denver. Third and goal from the four. What do you like here, Reggie? Anytime you're inside the five-yard line, I say you go play action. Force the defense to at least come up and, and look at the run a little bit, and maybe they lose one of your receivers on the motion there. But I have a feeling they're going to go straight back, drop back pass. 14th play of the drive. Sipniewski, the tight end in motion. Johnson alone setback. Oaks incomplete. Looking for Quinn Sipniewski. Aaron Sprague on the coverage. And that really had no chance. No. You know, and you go straight drop back. The defense has a very short field to defend when you're inside the five. I like play action because at least the linebackers have to look at the running back and say, is he getting the ball or not, before they drop back into coverage. Jeremy Flores, the senior, Willard, Missouri. In for the 21-yard try. And it's good. So the long drive by Colorado to get down to where they had third and goal at the four. They can't convert, but they do get the three on the board from Flores. With a 10-point lead for the Buffs with 6.07 left until halftime. Give you the Aflat trivia question a moment ago. Five conference titles in the last seven years for Sonny Lubick. Which school has won more conference titles over that same span? I guess Southwest Texas State. No good. Florida State, of course, in the ACC, seven titles, seven years, and the Seminoles have only lost twice in the ACC during that time to Virginia and to my alma mater, NC State. 
Wow. Do I get partial credit for having the word state in my answer? We'll think about it. <laughs> you're in Denver. You're in your, your hometown, your adopted hometown. So we might give it to you. 15 plays on wow. that drive. Taking it down 79 yards. Sonny Lubick's defensive line, especially with some things to correct maybe at halftime because that offensive line for Colorado has opened up big holes throughout the afternoon. And that offensive line for Colorado, these are big guys. Three of them are 320 pounds, and then two of them are 295 pounds. I mean, these are big, big players. Rebstock and Wynn, Dexter Wynn back deep at their own goal line. Waiting the kick from Pat Brome. Dexter Wynn from his own three yard line. The cutback, he's got a seam. To the 27, maybe the 28. Had a good look momentarily. Excuse me, but he closed quickly. 25 yards on the return. Now, ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. New Nivea for men after shave balm. More evolved skincare. Pepsi One, the first one calorie cola that tastes more like a regular. Pepsi One, this one's just right. And Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. First down at the 28. D.J. Bush looks back, throws, got a man complete out in the flat. Close to a first down, they may have one. That's number 27, Dallas Davis, who we haven't talked a lot about so far. The senior out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Only two games last year, had the back problems, the hamstring problems. Got a medical redshirt from the NCAA, the three-year starter back for his last season. And he led them in receiving in 1999, back this year, and they expect big things of him. Not only at the wideout spot, but also returning punts, too. He and Rebstock is dangerous a tandem as you're going to get. Bush hands it off. That play was not well executed from the get-go. Henry Childs, the carry, but didn't get much. That was the counter trade. You got those big offensive linemen, the tackle and the guard from the left side, drop back and start running over to the right side. And it's a train when they get going, but that one was derailed early. Childs lost a yard, so it's second and 11. Dreesen in motion. Bush, plenty of time going up top, contact through the hands of Strickland. Should have been picked off. All we have a moment. Let's go to Times Square Stadium in New York and an update on Michigan from John Saunders. Well, Terry, as you know, no team out of the Mid-American Conference has ever gone into the big house and won. Michigan trying to keep that going, but Ben Roethlisberger, 21 yards to Eddie Tellitz. They don't get the point after. Miami, Ohio on the board, only trailing 10-6. Terry. All right, John, the cradle of coaches, Miami of Ohio, testing Michigan at the big house. Third and 11 with 5.02 until halftime. D.J. Bush, the sophomore first-time starter over the middle. Pete Rebstock has it, maybe just short of a first down. We'll wait and see. It, it appears that he is just short of that first down. I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of times you say a receiver has to make sure he gets past the marker, but that depends. It depends on how close that marker is and how far out of your normal range you have to go to get it. If you go too deep out of your normal route, it throws off the timing. The quarterback's now throwing the ball into a dangerous situation. So I think it's more incumbent upon the coaches to try to call a play that will get you that amount of yards. Well, doesn't matter right now. Not enough for the first down. I'll tell you what, the marker on the far sideline may have been off just a little bit because it he was off by a lot. He had not <laughs> made it by uh, by that account. So the move, the chain, Sonny Lubick squad trying to get something going here before the half. Child 
gets the cut back. Just tripped up. Falls ahead inside the 45. Donald Strickland got him by one shoe, or he may have been gone. Now, don't forget, coming up, the Valvoline Halftime Show. At half, John Saunders and Terry Bowden bringing you up to date on all the scores, highlights from college football today, and a preview of tonight's games here on ABC Sports. Valvoline Halftime Show. 4-10 from now, Swoboda, Brad Swoboda, the backup H-back or tight end, hobbling off. Second and three, Bush on the roll. Got Dreesen wide open. Hangs on after he's hit at the 41-yard line. Jayshon Sykes hit him hard. Third catch of the afternoon for Dreesen, including a touchdown catch earlier. Jayshon Sykes is so impressive. I mean, his speed to cover from sideline to sideline. The kid can just run, and, and this despite hurting his ankle early in the game and, and being out for a little while. Now, I said earlier they're now lining him up up on the line a number of times, out on the edge, letting him put some pressure on the quarterback. A lot of linebackers don't like to do that, but he relishes that. He loves to do it. Childs, tough running. Ahead for three to the 37. Most linebackers, Jay Sean Sykes is 230 pounds. Most guys, you say, hey, we want you to line up against a 320 pounder. Yeah. They're not excited about it. Yeah. But they say that Jay Sean loves it, loves getting down there and doing that. 6'3", 230-pounder from L.A. Numbers last year, not as good as his numbers the previous season, and he will tell you that. Really wanted to come back strong, and this is last year. Pressure on Bush gets it away. Complete, but not going anywhere. Wrapped up right at the 40-yard line. Phil Jackson on the hit. He just crushed Joey Capari as soon as he got the ball. Pacific Life game summary coming your way right now. Let's take a look at what has happened in terms of total yards. Colorado with almost 160 total yards. But more importantly, maybe the 89 to 70 ratio, very close there. Okay, close to what they wanted. They wanted to be 50-50 run pass, and they're achieving that. 225 and counting here until half. Third and a long nine coming up for the Rams. Movement on the right side. So they'll back them up. Time of the snap. Full start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. You know, when you're 315 pounds and you're down in a three-point stance, it doesn't take much of a shift to shift that load back. <laughs> and once it gets shifted... You're not stopping it. Yeah. <laughs> you're going a long way back. <laughs> Third 14, and listen to the crowd here. Split about halfway down the middle. Colorado State fans, Colorado fans, and a sellout crowd. Great drop for Bush. Plenty of time. Almost picked off twice. Roderick Sneed was there. Medford Moore, number 17, had it in his hands. The biggest thing you have to worry about with a young quarterback is that he doesn't see safeties. Bush looks back here. He looks like he's looking at the safety, but he starts to throw this ball, just does not see the guy underneath. And that's usually when you get a pick, it's when somebody's underneath and the quarterback just flat doesn't see him. Uh, Phil Jackson almost had it too. Joey Huber on for the punt. Roman Hollowell back at his own 10 yard line awaiting. Hasn't had a chance to return one yet. And he's not going to feel this one. Look at the bounce. Inside the two-yard line at the one 44-yard punt, and Colorado is backed up deep. Now, last week, Roman Hollowell made a mistake, fielded a punt at the one-yard line. This time, if he's not going to catch it, I think he should lead the guys away from it instead of faking it, faking it, faking it right where the ball's going to go so they can recover it, lead them to one side or another away from where the ball's going. And now critical for Colorado not to make a mistake. The mistake on the fake punt is what led to the Colorado State touchdown. Tough running ahead to, how about the three, is Chris Brown, number 22. 
But with 128 and counting until the half, Gary Barnett just wants to get to the house with a 10 point lead. Get to the house with a 10 point lead. I think for CSU, they're not going to be too disappointed to be down by 10 points given the way this game started and they rallied back a little bit. I think Lubick maybe should have called timeout after that last play because you could hold them three and out and still have a chance. Across the five up to the seven yard line. Now you've got 54 seconds and time is called. Eric Pauley made the stop. So Sonny Lubick now calling that timeout. All right, so they have one timeout left. And what, what do you think you do at CU? Do you just concede this point and say, you know what? We're going to run another play and punt the ball to you and see what you can do, or do you try to get the first down? Well, I'm not sure that you can risk throwing at this point that deep in your own territory, but we'll see. Come, what do you think? That's, it's a tough call. I mean, <laughs> on the one hand, if you get another first down, you can run out the clock. Don't give them another shot at all. If you don't get a, you know, if you, obviously the danger of throwing a pass, it could get tipped, it could get picked off, it could, you know, a lot of, it could be incomplete. And now the ball right now is on the six yard line. If it's incomplete, you're punting from there. Your punter's got his foot on the back line. So maybe you do, maybe you just run the ball, try to give your punter a little bit more room and say, we're going to punt this away and see if our defense can hold them. It's the old line. Three things can happen when you throw the ball. Two of them are bad. Yeah, that's true. Give DJ Bush some credit here in the first half. The way he started the game, throwing that interception for the touchdown on the first series as a starting quarterback, he's come back, kept his composure, kept them in the game. Bobby Purify, the tailback, he gets the toss over the left side, another big hole, and he's close to a first down. He's calling it, saying he's got it. Was tripped up and kind of fell ahead near that first down marker or what you can do you can pitch the ball to Bobby Purify <laughs> tell the offensive line to do what they've been doing and go ahead and get the first down must have some kind of deal with that offensive line <laughs> they've opened up some gaps they're getting paid under the table somehow <laughs> Purify has been able to run at will so far in the first half and had that 18 yard touchdown run in the first quarter so 30 seconds of counting now until halftime. And the drum, the fullback getting the call. Drum, 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 drum. He's the man, Brandon Drum. Is that his third carry? Third carry of the game. He's a superstar. Bobby Purify, by the way, seven carries for 65 yards here in the first half. And that's going to be it. Here in the first half in Denver, 17 to 7 to score at the half. Valvoline Halftime Show coming up right after this message and a word from our ABC station. The Valvoline Halftime Show brought to you by Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. From Times Square in New York, John Saunders and Terry Valvoline. Colorado leading Colorado State 17 to 7 is the score and Terry this is a very important game for Gary Barnett if he loses it three straight years they have not lost to Colorado State three consecutive years since back in the 30s yeah, and I've been impressed with them because I would have thought the players would be up tight you know they lost three and eight last year upset last week by Fresno State two straight losses to Colorado State, but they came out, scored 14 straight points, tacked a field goal on late. Real impressed with their first half performance. All right, defending national champions out of Oklahoma already with one win under the belt, looking to go 2-0 and, oh and win for the 15th consecutive time. This is Nate Hibble, 13 yards to the tight end. Trent Smith, 17-3. Hibble has looked pretty good in this game. I'm telling you, the coaches are content to bring him along slowly because that defense is playing so good, but he really picked up, scored there in the last of the second quarter. Troy State, their first game in Division I a, and it has to be against Nebraska at Nebraska. Brock Nutter is forced here to fumble. It's recovered by John Clanton, who takes it in 21 to 7. The score at that point. 
But Darren Dietrich really was the story of this game. Eric Crouch needed two things to happen this year to help him lead them to the Rose Bowl. A great eye back, uh, Deron Dietrich at 177 yards, and the defense held Troy State to 166 yards. Another great day. Dietrich also with three touchdowns, coming back after missing the first game because of suspension, and he did a terrific job this afternoon. Syracuse facing Tennessee. Phil Fulmer expecting a better season out of his volunteers this year, and Casey Clawson is a quarterback who can get him there. This is a first play from scrimmage, 37 yards to Dante Stallworth for the touchdown. Tough start for Syracuse. Tennessee has won 23 straight non-conference games at home. And Syracuse looking at going 0-2. Clawson, as he has that touchdown, Tennessee rolling early, just 7-0, but they've really had the advantage offensively moving the football. Connecticut at Virginia Tech. Grant Noel coming out of the huddle as he's ready for to take over for Michael Vick, which is a hard act to follow. Michael Vick, of course, coming out after his redshirt sophomore year now in the National Football League with the Atlanta Falcons. And it's difficult to follow an act like Vick, but Noel is the guy who's going to have to do it. And not a bad start here. 48 yards, although Andre Davis does most of the work. Hey, Grant Noel started out 8 for 8, but he had great help from Andre Davis, great help from Lee Suggs at tailback, uh, over 600 yards of defense. Noel again, this offense. time to Jarrett Ferguson, who takes it in for the touchdown before getting the big pop. The story in this one, though, Lee Suggs, 12 carries for 99 yards and a couple of touchdowns before he left the game. We're told he needs an MRI on his left knee. He's had problems with this knee in the past, but Grant Noel, not a bad debut. No, not bad at all. Again, that Lee Suggs, that's critical. He scores their touchdowns for them. He's an integral part of their offense. All right, no team out of the Mid-American Conference has gone into the big house and beaten Michigan. Miami of Ohio trying to do that, already down 10-0. Ben Roethlisberger, 21 yards to Eddie Tillits, and they're on the board. Miami of Ohio trailing by only four. The point after was missed, and it's 12-0 against Mid-American Conference teams. But John Navarre has just tossed another touchdown pass from a yard out, 17-6 Michigan. Well, that's good because they lost so much of their firepower. Drew Henson, Anthony Thomas, David Terrell, all their big guns on offense gone. John Navarre has come back. He started a few games last year and won. Your brother... Tommy Bout <laughs> pulls it out against Central Florida. We said this before. Not a game you want to start the season with. Woody Dantzler with a nice performance. It sure was. You know, UCF did this to Georgia Tech last year in the opening game the same way. Woody Dantzler, the only thing offensively that was really very good for Central for, uh, for Clemson, but their defense held Central Florida to 35 yards rushing. That's why they won the game. In the offseason, we know that the Bowden family gets together in Florida. You play some golf and such. Is there talk that this year, Tommy's team, your brother, could overtake your dad's team at Florida State. Well, you know why I think he's thinking that? Because he didn't talk it at all. Deep in his mind, he loved hearing Georgia Tech talk. He didn't talk much about his team, but I look in his eyes, and I think he thinks this is the year they've got Florida State at home that they're going to be able to beat them. Got to yeah. play better than today, though. Yeah, they've gotten a little better. Remember, two years ago, they did almost beat your dad at home before getting crushed last year in Tallahassee. <laughs> Illinois facing Cal. Antonio Harris, three touchdown runs, one from a couple from a yard and one from seven yards out. To Illinois scored the first four times they had the ball to get out of this one ahead right away. And Georgia, Mark Rick, your dad's former offensive coordinator, 45 to 17 out of the gate. I think he made a great decision to start redshirt freshman David Green. Uh, his first debut there, 21 to 29. But next week against South Carolina, they're going to be tested for sure. And Musa Smith also with 20 carries for 158 yards and three touchdowns. Stick around, we'll continue. Bobby Purify takes this one in right now, and Colorado has a 17 to 7 lead. This is the Valvoline Halftime Show. The second half still to come. John Saunders alongside Terry Bowden. Last year, Oklahoma State faced the Southern Miss. They lost that game at home. Les Miles, the new head coach for the Cowboys, has to take his team down to Hattiesburg, Mississippi for the first game under him. Jeff Kelly, 20 yards, looking for Chris Johnson, comes across, scores a touchdown relatively easy at that point. A 7-3 lead after the point after. And then Dwayne Woods had a good day. One yard on the touchdown run. Woods 20 carries for 75 yards in the touchdown. Southern Miss gets the win. Southern Miss had a typical strong defensive performance. Only gave up 45 yards rushing. But I got to tell you, the quarterback for Oklahoma State's name is Aso Tela Tanga Famo Lily. That's 20 letters. His last name has four letters. Oh, guy. You can say that again, John. I don't think I can, Terry. <laughs> to tell you the truth, one time for the whole year, and that'll be it. 
Louisville facing Kentucky. John L. Smith looking on. Dave Ragone has a good quarterback. 82 yards to Parker. 7-0. Louisville would have the lead. And then Ragone again would show the strong arm this time between a couple of defenders. Ragone, as you said many times, one of the best quarterbacks a lot of people around the country don't know that much about. Great NFL prototype quarterback. Third year in a row, Louisville has won this game. Tough start for new Kentucky head coach Guy Morris. For West Virginia, also with a new head coach, Rich Rodriguez facing Boston College. Brian St. Pierre had a fumble earlier, but this time tosses the option to Willie Green. He takes it in for the touchdown, ties things up, and then Willie Green, who just had an unbelievable day with over 200 yards. Not a good day defensively for West Virginia. Offensively, of course, they turned the ball over four times and could move it between the 20s, but couldn't get it in the red zone. William Green wasn't done. This one from a yard out, 28 carries, 204 yards, and three touchdowns. Easily the best debut for this year in the Big East. Elsewhere, North Carolina facing Maryland. Game some of you saw here on ABC. Ralph Friedgen, his debut. Sean Hill is quarterback 20 yards to Jafar Williams. It tied the game at seven apiece. And then Sean Hill again. This one just five yards to Scooter Monroe as Maryland starts to pull away. And Ralph Friedgen back at his alma mater, and he is leading the crowd in the fight song. You ever do that? No, he's, he's glad to be back at Maryland, but he did a great job of preparing his team for this game against North Carolina. Defense played well. Offense ran the option again, threw the ball well. Great start for Ralph Friedgen and his Maryland team. Bruce Perry, 21 carries, 116 yards. Kent facing Iowa. Aaron Greving, what a day he had. 14 yards on this touchdown run. Should have been down a couple of times, but powers his way in. 20 to nothing, then grubbing again from 26. I'm going to tell you, before they get in their conference, if they can get big wins like this, I know it was against Kent, not one of their stronger opponents, but a big way to start the season for Iowa, who've had a couple of tough years struggling. Liddell Betts, 15 carries for 99 yards. Aaron Greving, just three carries, all four touchdowns in the 41 yards. That three for three that ties an NCAA record. Welcome back. John Saunders alongside Terry Bowden. The second half still to come, but first a reminder, we have the third game in our triple header coming up. And this one, another split national of interesting ramifications. Take a look at this. Bear Bryant, 20 years since he posted win number 323. With a win tonight, though, Joe Paterno joins the Bear in coaching immortality. His adversary, Miami's rookie head coach, Larry Coker, who hopes to delay Joe Pa's celebration and in the process pick up his first win. I think the fact that it is Penn State, that is a, an irony. I just taken the job and our athletic director said, you know, said, I just thought about something. You open the season against Penn State and Joe Paterno in their stadium. And I said, wow, that's you know, quite an honor and quite a challenge for sure to open uh, my coaching career against a head coach like, uh, like Coach Paterno. Also at 8 o'clock on ABC, some of you will see number seven Oregon looking to avenge last season's costly loss to the Wisconsin Badgers. But the rematch is at Outson Stadium. Despite their success, Oregon is still fighting for recognition. I guess not many people have known about us. We've, over the last seven or eight years, have won more games in the Pac-10 than anybody. You know, more than the SCs, more than the UCLA's. Uh, and I bet you if you asked you know, anybody on the East Coast, they'd have no, no idea about that. Two of the more intimidating programs to go to right now on the road, places to play. Who do you like in this game? John, I picked Miami and Oregon to play for the national championship. If they don't win tonight, my prediction goes down the drain the very first season, game of the week of the season. Yeah, right before <laughs> Labor Day. Right now, let's take it back out to your game. And here in Denver, the sun is back out. The Colorado State Marching Band entertaining on the field. 17-7, Colorado up at the half. Second half straight ahead, right after this message. And a word from our ABC stations. 17 to 7 your halftime score Colorado up on Colorado State here at Invesco Field at Mile High Terry Gannon back with Reggie Rivers look at the first half Reggie Colorado did exactly what they needed to do they got on the board first with the interception return yeah they get the big play early get their confidence back Colorado State responds well to make it a game again a 17 7 now I think the next score defines this thing Colorado scores first they're basically running away with this thing Colorado State gets a game again Colorado deferred to the second half they'll be receiving DJ Bush the first time starter for Colorado State threw that interception early on but his confidence wasn't shaken he really settled down at that point he did he did he's done a good job so far Sonny Lubick who has won 
five conference titles in the past seven years. We told you that 10 and 2 last year. Season opener for the Rams. Needing a comeback in the second half. Down by 10. Colorado to receive to get the second half underway. As the cannon goes off. In and through the end zone. They'll bring it back out to the 20. Roman Hollowell hasn't had much of a chance at all to return either punts or kicks today. And Colorado State has said, though, they'll kick to him. They're not going to kick away from him. Our Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline. The first half stats, the rushing yards, impressive for Colorado because that's what they wanted to establish, Reggie. It is, and, and they did a good job of establishing the run. It's easier to do when you're ahead. I think it's interesting, CSU on the other side, they only have... Uh, 43 yards rushing, but they've, they're almost 50-50 rushing and passing. Despite being behind, they've stuck to their game plan. The one turnover, that was huge. It loomed large early in the game. Interception return for a touchdown. Chris Brown, actually Bobby Purify gets the first carry of the second half. Straight ahead, good game for Purify, who had seven carries for 65 yards in the first half. Purify has been impressive all day long. You know, and Colorado has all these running backs. You hear about Marcus Houston, who's unable to play today because of injuries. Portland Johnson, they worry about. And Purify comes in. Looks like he's been the starter all along. Gain of seven on that last carry, so it brings up second and a long three. Purify with 72 yards now and more as he gets across the 30 to the 31. Should have another first down. Picked up a number of those in the first half. Had the 18-yard touchdown run in the first half to Purify. He's really looked good all day. This drive could define the way the second half is going to go. If, if Colorado just comes out and marches it down the field nice and neat, maybe that's how they're going to they're going to dominate the game that way. Colorado State needs to stop them. First and 10 at the 32. Cormier in motion to the far sideline. Out of the eye. Purify gets the call again, wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage and falls straight ahead. The loss last week for Colorado was certainly important. How important is this game? How much pressure is there on Gary Barnett? We asked him that. I don't know whether they understand how big a game this is. I, I, I think it's, uh, it's tough to make this game bigger than life um, as a coach because I don't want that. To, I don't want to put themselves in that kind of position. Same time, they got our, we all understand that it's a it's a huge game on our schedule and it's a huge game in the state that we reside and it's going to be a huge game for 12 months uh, because everybody in the state is involved with this game so on one side or the other and we're going to hear about it uh, if we win and we're going to hear about it if we lose fine line as you see Matt Brunson come in and catch the ball coming across and a gain of about three but a fine line that he had to walk all week long uh, Gary Barnett he wanted to make sure his troops got back up wanted to make sure though that they understood how critical this game was but not put too much pressure on him and, and to, to talk to him this week I mean there was a lot of pressure there's no doubt about it there's been a lot of pressure on him a lot of pressure on his team and you just worry that in response to that pressure guys will come out try to make bigger plays than maybe they should be trying to make press a little bit and have mistakes but they look like they've really been settled down and really been playing solid football today Brandon drum with a catch over the middle on third and seven drum, and that's drum, short drum, of drum. a first down Adam Wade stuck him as soon as he got the ball I'd love for Brandon drum to keep doing well but uh, you know, if, if, if it's going to elicit that kind of response, I'm not sure I want it. <laughs> it, gets, it gets old pretty quick. <laughs> Dallas Davis back deep at his own 18. Mark Maliskal kind of bobbled the snap for a moment. Had plenty of time. This one's a great one, too. Inside the five. Can they down it? It goes into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20. 59-yard punt from Mark Mariscal, the junior from Tallahassee. Yeah, they had the chance to put him down backed up. While we have a moment, don't forget tonight, ABC wraps up its college football triple header. We've got number 23, Wisconsin, taking on number 7, Oregon. Austin Stadium, one of the toughest places to play. No question about it. Do you think Oregon could be in the running for ugliest uniforms? 
Ah, uh, you're jumping on the bandwagon now. Give them a oh. break. Now they got a Heisman hopeful and Joey Harrington there. <laughs> They're green uniforms. You know, what are you going to do? Man. Play action for Bush. Now, Joel Dreesen, who punishes <laughs> a defensive back as he crosses the 25 to the 26. Fourth catch of the afternoon, Phil Jackson, the unfortunate soul who stuck his head in there. <laughs> That's good play action fake. I think a good part of the defense really bought on that. And then they get the pass outside to Dreesen. Of course, Sykes is there on the tackle as well, as he is on virtually every tackle, it seems. A spot in at the 26 after a gain of six. Second and four. Rebstock in motion. Henry Childs got to get the running game going, and Childs can't do it this time. Justin Bannon caught him from behind along with Sean Tufts, number 54. Now that was an odd offensive play. You have two kinds of plays. You have handoffs and you have pitches. Then you get the rare play that's kind of a combination between the two where the back is aiming at a point that's so wide, the quarterback comes out from center and has to sprint to the sideline to try to get the ball to him. Just barely got there that time. Davis wide to the near sideline. Joey Kapari to the far sideline on third and a long three. Quick drop, quick throw behind the receiver and caught at the 30. We'll see where they mark it now. See where they mark the forward progress as Davis did a nice job of hauling that one in and holding on. Jay Sean Sykes was all over DJ Bush. This is a great job by Dallas Davis, but watch Sykes on this play as he comes in to try to put pressure on, not slowing down, gets blocked at last. That's actually a very good block by the yeah. running back to save the hit. Henry Childs doing more than just carrying the football this afternoon. First and ten, they give him the first down as Dreesen goes up to the line. Push under center, Childs the carry, trying to get outside. Cuts back, close to a first down again for Colorado State. And now that running game at 43 yards in the first half. Now the running game taking hold here in the second half. Right? Piers and Lancaster doing a good job up front, opening the hole. And that's the exact same play they ran a couple of minutes ago, the wide handoff. They did something different. Instead of having Dreesen start in the backfield and then run up to make his block, ran him up to the tight end position. Mm -hmm. He's able to seal the corner. They get it outside. Good balance there. 17 rushes, 20 passes on the afternoon. Gain of 12 on that last play. They moved the chains. First and 10 at the 44. Straight ahead goes Childs. Maybe two. Henri Childs, the transfer from Kansas. His dad, of course, starred in the NFL. Redshirted last year after that transfer. Played four different positions at Kansas. Really wanted to run the ball. And they were thinking about moving him out to the wideout spot. He returned a lot of kicks and punts that first year. But he wanted to be a running back. And so he's getting the chance at Colorado State. And Blow it dead before the snap. Delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. First one this afternoon. Delay of game, at least. I've always thought it ironic that to call delay of game, they stop the game and delay it a little bit more. You know, it seems like there should be some different penalty. <laughs> Maybe the team gets fined after the game. Instead of going ahead and uh, making the game even longer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brings up second and 13 now. E.J. Bush, the sophomore from Santee, California. Play action, under pressure, throws. Picked off. Lewis has got it. Coming back all the way to the end zone. Michael Lewis, the second interception for a touchdown for Colorado this afternoon. it off and brings it back Excessive and celebration. Just a bad decision by Bush here he's in trouble trying to throw it from the opposite hash all the way across the field once you get out of your rhythm you get in trouble you don't have as much steam on the ball that is a dangerous dangerous throw and a great play by Lewis to pick it off 
And Bush knows that he's you thinking see the, now. The version of the Lambo leap at the end, and there was a flag for excessive celebration again. Same thing that happened on that first touchdown. Now, so does that mean you're not allowed to jump after you score? Uh, they threw, I'll tell you what, they threw the flag right away as soon as he jumped up. This from the 25, so 35 yards on the PAT. Up and good. The pick by Lewis, he read it perfectly as Bush, an ill-advised throw, and Lewis bringing it back all the way for the touchdown. 24-7, the Bucks on a roll right now. Bradley Van Pelt, the sophomore from Santa Barbara, California, warming up on the sideline after D.J. Bush just threw his second interception uh, going back for touchdowns this afternoon. The first, a 31-yard return by Don Strickland, and the last one, 41 yards from Michael Lewis. So it's 24 to 7, Colorado with the lead here in the second half. Pete Repstock from his own three. To the 26. Marcus Harris, number 30. The initial hit. So what do you think, Sonny Lubick? Making the switch right now, would you do it, Reggie? I think that at this point, yes, you do. You know, now you've had a whole half. You've stuck with Bush, and he's, he's played a pretty good half, but this last mistake was a decision mistake. You know, he shouldn't have thrown that ball. He's in a tough position, but of course, he's a sophomore, and this is his first game, and it's tough. I think you bring Brad Van Pelt in, hope that he makes some plays, creates some excitement, maybe get something going on offense. Van Pelt, who's dead? Brad. Of course, start at Michigan State, then in the NFL, a linebacker was one of the greats for the Spartans. First snap for him here. He's going to throw on first down. Throws back Joey Capari with the catch across the 30, sidestepping his way and fighting his way to the 36-yard line. Good game. His fourth catch of the afternoon. It'll be about a yard shy of a first down. And they don't waste any time right off the bat. Van Pelt throws a pass. Admit it, it's a, it's a hitch play. And a good call, too. I like that hitch because that's exactly what CU had so much trouble with with Fresno State last week. Well, the two quarterbacks are very good friends. In fact, they room on the road together. And so there was no animosity whatsoever in camp, even with the spirited competition. Van Pelt gives it off to his tailback. Henry Childs ahead should have a first down. Justin Bannett on the stop. They'll move the chains. In some ways, the quarterback position is different than other positions. In other ways, it's not. Players compete for the job. They know that, say, a running back who has two fumbles in a game, he might get pulled out and another running back goes in. It's a bigger deal when it's a quarterback, but I think both these guys understand that, hey, we've got a good guy on the sideline no matter who's on the field, and sometimes the coach might have to go to him. Gets more attention naturally than any other position, though. Right. So first and 10 at the 37. Play action, Van Pelt, he can run. Throws on the run. Incomplete, the intended receiver, Eric Hill. Corey Massoni, the outside linebacker, was chasing Van Pelt down. From the player's perspective, even having Van Pelt in there on a play like that that goes incomplete is still an exciting play. It can, I think that can get the whole C CSU sideline charged up, thinking, hey, we got something going here. And it's not that Van Pelt is better than Bush. They're just different players and different styles of play. And they really did get the running game going on that last drive. Sure the did. first downs and we're moving the ball. Second and 10 now. But in the option to the near sideline, and Van Pelt can certainly do that up to the 40-yard line. Stays in bounds, wrapped up by Michael Lewis, who a moment ago had the interception. So just under seven minutes here in the third quarter. In Vesco Field, that mile-high first regular season game ever in this brand-new $400 million stadium. Terry Gannon, along with Reggie Rivers, it's been all buffs to this point, 24-7. Colorado State trying to move the chains here, move the ball, and get something going in the third quarter. Redstock in motion. Man, help the straight drop. Over the middle, and that should have been picked off. 
Rebstock was the intended receiver. Oh. He had no chance to get to that ball. Dangerous pass right there. Rebstock goes in motion and then is going to run about a 10 yard crossing route, it looks like. But this ball is well from well in front of him and over. And again, I think with young quarterbacks, they get focused in on their receiver. They don't necessarily see the defender who's coming in the position from, from a different place. Is that one of the biggest adjustments when you make that switch and you make your first start that, that you lock on to a receiver? Oh, sure, absolutely. Huber's punt with Hollowell back, and he's not going to have a chance to field this one either, but it is not a very good punt. 29 yards. Start just outside the 30, Will the Bucks. 24-7, Colorado. Oh, the Cub fan just woke up. I know it's September. The Cubbies are sliding. What are they still four games out? But uh, And despite rumors to the contrary, that kid is only 12 years old. <laughs> Here we go. Not a, not a day older. Had enough of that this week. Oh, I think, my from, goodness. Uh, what a Williams. scandal. It's too bad. 6-15 left in the third quarter, and Colorado starting to dominate this game. Chris Brown with the carry straight up the middle. Brown and Bobby Purify doing the damage this afternoon for Gary Barnett. And ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the 2002 Pontiac Bonneville. Luxury with attitude. Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up, never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And the Olive Garden. When you're here, your family. Craig Oaks having a good day, but he hasn't had to really been a superstar today. He hasn't had to have a great day today because the ground game doing the damage. Quick throw, out complete, short of a first down, knocked out of bounds at the 39 is John Minardi. Fourth catch of the afternoon for Minardi. Solid, dependable wide receiver. I like the approach that CU has taken in this game, just trying to keep things balanced. They do have a superstar in Craig Oaks. He is the kind of player who can carry you, who can make the big throws, but they're really committing themselves to establishing a ground game because long-term over the course of the season, that's what they have to have. Absolutely, and in the Big 12 especially, you got to be able to establish that. Last week, they were down early and really couldn't use the ground game. Brown hitting outside. He's got room up the far sideline. Inside the 40-yard line is Chris Brown, a gain of 21. Was your man Reggie Brandon Drum who cleared the way? Hey Brandon Drum, Drum, Drum. But blocking is what he does. You know Chris Brown, Bobby Purify. They're gonna make it tough when Marcus Houston comes back from this uh, the torn groin muscle that he has, and, and that was confirmed. All the controversy this week about the injury confirmed. He had an MRI. It is a torn groin muscle. But what do you do with you're the coach? Do you put him back in as a starter, or do these guys have the spot? It's a decision that Gary Barnett's going to have to make once he comes back. They're not sure when he is going to come back. Bobby Purify over the right side, down close to the 35-yard line, make it the 36. Adam Wade on the stop. 83 yards on the afternoon, and look at the average. Man, very good day. And Chris Brown's got 70 yards. Just like Gary Barnett would order it up. Here's Marcus Houston on the sideline, been hampered by injuries last year and now starting off this year. But he will be a sensational player when he gets on the field. Grew up right here in Denver. Number of players who grew up right here in Denver in this game. Purify cuts back inside the 30, finally brought down at the 26-yard line. And Reggie, right now, this big offensive line for Colorado starting to wear down the defense for Colorado State. They absolutely are. They have been all day, and especially running over there behind Garode, Rogers, and Graham on that right-hand side. Those three guys, all three of them could be in the NFL. There's some questions about Rogers because of the injuries that he's had, but they are just powering off the ball, creating big holes, and just making it impossible for CSU to stop anything. Andre Gerard, number 65, 27 consecutive starts. Much more on the ground this afternoon for the Buffs. Drum, drum, Brandon drum. Brandon Drum, he lost the football. Colorado State has it at the 31. They just took it right away from it. Colorado able to grind it out and grind it out, and now they've turned it over. Jason Gallimore, I believe the man who came up with it. He 
just took it right away from him. Most of the time, a fumble hits the ground. This one, he just took it right out of his hands. Drum has it, and he said, ah, let's trade off here. I'll, 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 I'll take that. And he goes off running in the other direction. That's just a great play. Gallimore, the senior out of Wheat Ridge. Taking candy from a baby. Oh, drums no baby. First and 10, 31, play action. Van Pelt getting out, got a good block. Throws on the run, dangerous throw. An incomplete right between two receivers. Rebstock was the closest man. Dallas Davis out there too, but after the previous throw to end the last series, I'm not sure that Bradley yeah. Van Pelt wants to be doing that. No, and, and that was ill-advised from the start. It, something happened with the handoff fake. He gets out of his rhythm, almost gets sacked getting around the corner, and then kind of threw it up in, in a dangerous situation. Johnson tripped him up. Don't forget tomorrow, ABC Sports continues to bring you the excitement of the Indy Racing Series. Points leader Sam Ornish Jr. is there. Heads the field at the Delphi Automotive Indy 300 tomorrow live at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, right here on ABC. Third and 10. And this is a dangerous spot if you're Van Pelt. Same situation. He was almost picked off in on the last series. Plenty of time right now, though, and overthrows Repstock by about 10 yards and behind him. And when we talk to the coaches about the difference between these two quarterbacks, is that really Van Pelt is not as good as a drop back passer. Get him on the run, he can throw great on the run. He's got great athleticism, can do a lot. DJ Bush is more of the drop back, sit in the pocket type passer. And I think we're seeing a little bit of that with the, the accuracy of Van Pelt today. Joey Hubert back for his sixth punt of the afternoon. Last one was only 29 yards. Roman Hollowell wanting to return one. He hasn't gotten an opportunity. Better punt this time. Hollowell fields it and just swarmed under at the 28 as soon as he catches the ball. Woods got him as soon as he caught it. Punt of 41, no return. High tech gadget, the cooling system on the sideline. We saw some of the, the tubes on their back during the warm ups, Reggie, and, and wondered exactly what that was. The players are wearing these vests. And they have little tubes that come out of them so they can sit on the bench, get plugged in. I promise you, those aren't battery packs inside of them. They just, yeah. <laughs> just a cooling system to keep them cool. The old water bottle doesn't work anymore, I guess. <laughs> I guess not. Colorado first and 10 for their own 28. Nifty move by Bobby Purify into the open field. Flag is down as he crosses midfield to the 47. We'll check on the penalty marker. Man, Bobby Purify just gets better and better. They'll hold and they'll bring it back, but you can see the confidence too grow for Purify throughout the afternoon. It's got to be tough for any of those backs when you're in a crowded backfield like CU has and going through camp with all those guys. Holding offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Now he touched on it in the open how important this game is for Gary Barnett after the loss last week, the struggles last season going 3 and 8, the Big 12 schedule looming. It, it, you know, all week long, I think he felt it and certainly was under some heat in the media, whatnot, but. Uh, Got to give him credit for having his team prepared to come out here. They played well early in this one, right out of the gate. Right out of the gate, they make a big play. This is first and three, by the way, after the penalty from the spot of the foul. <laughs> second and four. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Second and four doesn't sound like a bad down and distance until it was first and three first. Craig Oaks, the big numbers last week, 31 of 50, 346 yards, but he had the four turnovers, 
including the critical play of the game, the interception in the end zone late, with just over three minutes left, where they, they could have thrown it out of the end zone, kicked the field goal to take the lead. And mentally, Barnett really didn't know where he would be coming back. This is batted down. Adam Wade came on the blitz, the outside linebacker, and batted that ball down. There's certainly been a lot of conversation about that last play in the Fresno game. You know, here Oaks says, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do when you're the quarterback. You try to throw the ball and you hope you get it through. Nice job by the defense there, Wade blocking that one. But a lot of talk about that last play for Oaks last week. And, you know, criticism that, hey, Barnes is blaming the quarterback. But I can understand what Barnett is saying that, hey, you know what? We called this play. He threw it into traffic and it got picked up. What can we do? In his defense, he described the play when asked about it and really didn't go out of his way to blame Oaks, but that's how the play was certainly described. Brown busts out to the near sideline. Chris Brown finally run out of bounds at the 29. Brown, purify, take your pick this afternoon. That's a gain of 36. Wow. Good job of blocking up front again. They're running at the big hosses that we talked about earlier. And once he gets on the corner, one missed tackle, and there's nobody else left to make the tackle. He's off and running. Jason Gallimore finally ran Chris Brown out of bounds. With a gain of 36. Wayne Lucier, the center, with a critical block. To spring up. First to 10. At the 29, Purify, his chance now. The cutback, look at the hole for Bobby Purify. Dragging defenders, he's got Gallimore all the way down to the one-yard line. Not only the speed, but some of the power of Bobby Purify. Bobby Purify is really making a statement here today with some of the runs that he's had. You know, we might say if some of the, the holes that he's had, oh, my grandmother could have run through that hole. But there have been plenty of plays that he's made today, like this one, where he is in, inventing, creative, powerful, and getting down the field. So Eric Bieniemy, the running back coach, running backs coach here, all-time leading rusher at Colorado, NFL star. First and goal from the one. Brown gets the call, prances into the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado, and now it's official. They're dominating this one. They are, and the CSU defense looks exhausted, worn out. You know, unfortunately, given the, the way this rivalry has shaped up the past few years, we're seeing in this game is kind of returned to the way that it was. CU dominates, CSU just tries to hang on. Left in the third. Jeremy Flores on for the extra point. It's up and it is good. 31 to 7 the score. What a difference a week makes. Last week the frustrating loss to Fresno State. Gary Barnett talked to us earlier in the week about that, his approach, where they were after one week, and that heartbreaking loss. We're gonna be a real good football team, and I think they know that. Um, they're just heartbroken. Uh, and, and you don't get over uh, a heartbreak in a day or two days. And so I think the challenge for us is obviously that, uh, and I've said this a number of times, but we can't let Fresno State beat us twice. And that's a good sound bite, but it's also very true, and he tried to make that clear to his players all week. You, you have to get over that now and move on. And you take some of the positives from that, that despite having five turnovers last week, they were still in the game, still had a chance to win it at the end. So that points to they've got a lot of talented players and a good team, and here they're having a game where they've only had one turnover, and you can see the difference that it makes. Colorado State not able to capitalize on the turnover. And the Buffalo is able to turn two interceptions into touchdowns this afternoon. What a difference a week makes. It's not that time already, is it? <laughs> Repstock win back deep. Pete Repstock watching this one sail out of the end zone. Bring it back out to the 20. And there's a penalty marker that an official now has picked up. Now he just picked it up and moved it. He didn't like the spot it was in. Down at the 40-yard line. 
Officials like their flags to be at around the 40. They don't like it when it's at the 45. I guess. Steve Juszczyk and his crew working this afternoon here in Denver on what's been a gorgeous afternoon. Labor Day weekend. Great crowd. Maybe the largest ever. Watch a college event. Not only a football game, a college event of any type in the state of Colorado. Brand new stadium. We have offsetting fouls. Holding on a receiving team. Offside on a kicking team. Re-kick. I tell you what, as a guy who has run down on a lot of kickoffs in my life, you hate to have to run down on two in a row. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're like thoroughbred racehorses. You get out there, you can run one, but then you got to rest for an hour, you know? <laughs> you can't run two in a row. Especially when you're a mile high. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's got to be a, a scary proposition every time you take off running down on, <laughs> on one of those. It is scary. But, you know, you, you get used to it, and, and you get to the point that you realize those guys might be more scared than you are. You're the one who's got the full head of steam yeah. going down there. they got to kind of stand and try to block you and take the hit. True enough. Must have been a thrill, too, though, Reggie. We're in Denver here to play next door at the old Mile High, the great atmosphere that was there. Oh, it was awesome. I mean, to, to get a chance to play here and, and the kind of crowds and fans that you have here has been incredible. You think it will be the same with the new stadium, the oh, atmosphere? Definitely. Yeah? definitely. In fact, they purposely built this stadium, made it out of concrete and steel, so it would make the same kind of noise and reverberation as the old stadium. The old stadium still standing right next door, but they are going to take it down after the season, I guess in November at some point. Yeah. Repstock, about the same place the first one went. He thought about it, went to a knee. So we did all that for the same result. So Colorado State, the you know obviously this game hasn't gone the way that they wanted to, but from the coach's perspective, they get a chance to look at both of their quarterbacks in action. They get to see what Bush can do, what Van Pelt can do. I imagine they'll probably leave Van Pelt in for the rest of the game and give them both a chance to just keep going and, and learn from this. Van Pelt, one out of five so far this afternoon. If you're Sonny Lubick right now, what do you say to him before he goes out there? Don't screw up. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I think you say relax. I mean, just try to make plays. Let's see what you can do. The option back to Childs, turns the corner, cuts back. Brought down by Jayshon Sykes, but after a gain of about nine. But in terms of your quarterback at this point in the game, I mean, you're down 31 to seven. Time's running out in the third quarter. What you don't want to have happen, uh, you don't want to see negative things take place on the field. Right. You don't want confidence shaken. This is a first-time starter as well. Exactly. You don't want him to go out and think that I've got to try to make up this deficit, this 24-point right. deficit. Tell him to go out and play your game. We're getting a chance to look at you. This is his first time in live action. It was Bush's first time in live action. They'll come out of this, and they'll both have had a chance to play in a game. And so now the coaches can really evaluate who should be the starting quarterback. Eric Hill, the intended receiver, broken up by Roderick Sneed, but a penalty marker down. He may have gotten there just a tad bit early. Pass interference. Defense. Spot foul. Automatic first down. So they'll move the chains. Timing a bit off for Roderick Sneed. This secondary, a much maligned secondary last year. In fact, in this game, they gave up the four big plays, which really cost them the ball game against Colorado State last year. So far, they have not given up that big play. Yeah, last year, I think Colorado had 500 yards of total offense against CSU. CSU had something like nine yards of rushing, but they had four big pass plays that went for touchdowns, so they win the game 28-24. Designed run, Van Pelt in the clear. Across midfield, Bradley Van Pelt to the 44-yard line. Nice call, nice run. Donald Strickland finally brought him down, but not after a game, not before a game of 22 yards for Van Pelt, who runs awfully well. This is what Van Pelt brings to the table. He's a great scrambler. This is a designed run. He just tucks it away and starts running. Shows that athleticism. They say he could play a lot of positions on the field. He wants to be a quarterback, and he, and he is a good quarterback. But this is the strength of what he brings to the field. It was one of the reasons 
he went to Colorado State at, at Michigan State they wanted to move him elsewhere and Colorado State was willing to say yeah we, we want you as a quarterback we're not going to move you to a linebacker spot someone may have jumped on the offensive line Patty the snap false start offense five yard penalty repeat the down it's one thing that Sonny Lubick doesn't put up with the penalties. I mean, most coaches don't want to see them either, but this is it's a coach and a team that really does a good job of keeping penalties under wraps. I think one of the things they told us were they were the least penalized team they were. in the NCAA last year. That's all discipline. Final seconds of the third quarter ticking off. Henri Childs cuts back but tripped up. Nice tackle by Donald Strickland, who got the Childs in a hurry. 31-7, Colorado up. Back for the fourth quarter after this message and a word from our ABC station. Fourth quarter about to get underway here in Denver in Vesco Field at Mile High, Colorado. Rolling this afternoon, 31-7 over Colorado State. 73rd meeting in the Rocky Mountain Showdown. Bradley Van Pelt on a relief of D.J. Bush. Wants to run it once again. An elusive quarterback as flags fly late. He gets down to the 37. Corey Massoni on the stop. Certainly getting an idea of how well Van Pelt runs. The last two series. And it's coming back with a holding. And you, as a coach, you really can't argue with a guy who can tuck it away and, and run for 10 yards. But it's hard when you're setting up your offense if he's going to be too quick. Illegal block in the back. On the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat second down. If he's too quick to give up on the pass and then run the ball, that becomes its own sort of problem as well. And so I think what they're trying to get with Van Pelt is the balance of being patient enough to sit back there and run when you have to. You don't want that to become his first option. Right. Even though he's good at it. I mean, you know, first option gets you 10 yards. That's not bad either. Second and almost 15. My action. Plenty of time for Van Pelt going up top. He's got Repstock wide open. Pete Repstock inside the 20, driven out of bounds, close to the 15 yard line. There was no one within 15 yards of Repstock. They must have been playing some kind of cover two where he had the flat and he thought someone behind him was going to cover Revstock. Well, nobody was coming over the top and Revstock is all alone. So it's hard to know whether the cornerback made the mistake quarter or whether it was a safety not coming over to be in position. 33 yards on the reception for Revstock. So it's first and 10 at the 15. Drayson in motion. Option to the near side. Van Pelt tucks it, turns up, and down to the seven. Don't forget at the conclusion of today's game, select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund that comes up later in the game. Second, call it a long two, maybe three here. 13.54 and counting. Left. Play action. Van Pelt can run, but he chooses to throw. And he underthrows his intended receiver, Eric Hill. He could have tucked it and, and run it that time. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I know Van Pelt, what he's thinking. He's like, okay, I shouldn't run every time. I shouldn't run every time. I'm going to try to throw the ball, and I have an open guy. But it's just hard. I think that's why it's been such a struggle for the, the CSU coaches to the side between these two guys. DJ Bush, good at the dropback stuff. Van Pelt, you know, he's just so good, so athletic running the ball, but and he could have run it there, but decides to try to throw it in is not even close. Hill frustrated because he was open. So it's third and two. Childs, the lone setback. Backfield, Childs gets to the end zone. 
Henri Childs on the reception from Van Pelt. Seven-yard touchdown catch by Henri Childs. Van Pelt comes right back. I, I thought for sure he might drop back and try to run it, but he delivers this one right on target. That's kind of a nice softball. And Childs does a good job of getting it into the end zone. It's easy to see why the coaches have had a dilemma. You put Brad Van Pelt on the field, he's exciting. He's a playmaker. Even though he's not doing all exactly the way you want as a drop back, he just makes plays. And not on for the extra point. It's up and it is good. So 13-34 left in this one here in Denver, Colorado State with the score. Look at the numbers for Henri Childs, the transfer from Kansas, the touchdown catch just a moment ago. Seven yards to the end zone. And so Colorado State now trailing 31 to 14 with 13-34 left here in Denver. Interesting the difference between Bush and Van Pelt. It's almost their styles are so different. It's almost like Sonny Lubick has to choose between which type of offense he wants to run when they're out there. Jeff Babcock kicking it out of the end zone. Yeah, it's not just a choice between two quarterbacks, but they, you're right. They're so different. You've got to make a choice. And in a short period of time in, in camp, right before the season starts, what your whole philosophy offensively is going to be, because if you if you start Van Pelt, you know you're going to run the option some. You know you're going to let him drop back and, and run the quarterback draws and that's going to be more of a threat than maybe you're passing and, and the drop back aspect of Bush difficult camp I'm sure for the coaches Bobby Purify the lone setback the give to Purify bounces away from what's still on his feet Purify Man. out to the 48-yard line. What an afternoon Man. he has had. Woo. Wow, Bobby Purify. And he, 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 he has just gotten stronger and stronger and stronger as the game has gone on. Made more plays, more different types of plays, showed more versatility. 28 yards on the run, got a good block from Victor Rogers, the big offensive tackle to spring him initially, and then he did all the rest himself. First and 10 at the 48. The running game, pretty impressive this afternoon for Colorado. They go to the air this time. Cormier, a nice grab to the far sideline, run out of bounds at the 46 yard line. Dexter Wynn ran him out there. Third catch of the afternoon for Cormier. Now look at this graphic. The guys who are on the field right now for Colorado. 99.3% of their total offensive production from last year is still on the team. The guys who produce it are still on the field. So they should be better after a year. I mean, they weren't great offensively last year, but they're showing that they're a lot better this year. More experience, uh, no question. And now a second-year quarterback in Oaks. Brown to the 32. And they are just giving it right, giving it left. Letting their tailbacks do the damage right now. So 12.53 left in this one here at Invesco Field at Mile High in Denver. Better than 75,000 now, the official tally. Terry Gannon along with Reggie Rivers. Been all Colorado for the most part this afternoon. Colorado State with a touchdown a moment ago. But on the first series, the interception return for a touchdown. By Donald Strickland got the Buffaloes on the board first. Brown wrapped up in the backfield this time. Going to lose one or two, and actually that's Cortland Johnson giving the other two guys a breather. Johnson, the senior out of St. Louis. Don't forget, more action tonight. Game three of our triple header here on ABC. Wisconsin taking on Oregon, the number seven team in the country. It's live at 8 Eastern time. And I take back what I said about Oregon's uniforms. No, just you cannot. Different. You know, they're just so unique. <laughs> Backpedaling going on. <laughs> Stick to your guns, Reggie. <laughs> Chris Brown trying to get outside, coming back to the near side now. Can't find any room, and at least he hangs onto the football. Almost lost it for a moment, but he'll lose a couple of yards. And right now, 
while we have this moment let's go to Times Square Stadium in New York check in with John Saunders and the Coors Light update Clemson facing Central Florida Aaron Hunt ready to kick a field goal a hold of Jeff Scott says no that's a fake kick and they takes it in for the touchdown 21 7 at that point 21 13 was the final there thanks John the Tigers tested this afternoon getting the win though it's interesting when uh, he reversed field on that last play Oaks came up to block one of the defensive linemen I know on the sideline Barnett is thinking don't do it whatever you're thinking don't do it took a lot of hits last week and didn't slide <laughs> at all Just hits near the sideline timeout Colorado back in a moment 371 total yards this afternoon for Colorado getting it done on the ground too. 283 Craig Oaks by the way is 14 out of 17 today but it's all been short possession type routes 88 yards overall his longest pass this afternoon for 11 yards this time over the middle to Chris Brown with the catch so he's 15 out of 18 now ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler for reinventing the passion for driving Morgan Stanley formerly Morgan Stanley Dean Witter move your money get well connected original cores nothing beats an original and Capital One what's in your wallet not enough <laughs> never enough <laughs> Jeremy Flores on now for a try from 41 yards plenty of leg and straight through the uprights Flores there was an eligibility question earlier in the week. They were not sure whether or not they would get him back, but they worked that out, and he's had a good afternoon. And apparently not an eligibility problem like he's a guy barely hovering above the, the minimum GPA. It was an English class that he needed to take, a Shakespeare literature class, and he didn't get it all done in summer during the summer, and so he had one paper to turn in, didn't get it turned in on time last week. Greg Oaks working on his shoulder on the sideline and you remember Reggie talked about that play where he tried to make a block perhaps that's where it took place you know early here here he is coming in he's like oh I'll get in there and make this block and he does the, the good news is that the shoulder they're looking yeah, at the other shoulder. is his left shoulder so probably he didn't get hurt on that play but something um, has happened and they're looking at his shoulder right now. 15 out of 18 so the running game dominating this afternoon and the short passing game doing the same thing as Bobby Pesaveno the senior from Indiana warms up on the sideline 34 14 your score here in the fourth rep stock frustrating afternoon especially trying to return some of these every kickoff has been deep into the end zone. Don't forget, if time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report. Scores and highlights from across the country. John Saunders, Terry Bowden in New York. I think CU has accomplished everything that they set out to accomplish today, with the exception of the fake punts that, that was ill-advised early in the game. But otherwise, they've been sol extremely solid defensively. They established the running game they said they needed to establish, and they have just dominated this game in every aspect. Bradley Van Pelt back out running the show for Sonny Lubick's club. Straight drop. Over the middle, picked off. Michael Lewis's second interception of the afternoon. Lewis, the senior out of Richmond, Texas. Brad Van Pelt makes a bad decision here. You can see why the coaches like him so much. The athleticism, the movement. The ball is actually on target, but it's just thrown into too much coverage. It's, it's a mistake he probably won't make when he gets older. But right now, he's just too rough and, and too willing to, to take a chance. Lewis with his second pick. The leading tackler a year ago for Colorado. Jason Sykes applied the pressure flushing Van Pelt out of the pocket. May have never seen him. Yeah, and that's the thing. He probably didn't never see him. And the, 
For CSU, the problem is they have two quarterbacks. They're both very good quarterbacks. Neither one has any experience. And so all the things that, are, that a young quarterback is going to be subject to as far as experience, they're both going to be hit by that. Good news for Colorado. Bobby Purify had the carry on that last series. He came out, and they were working on him on the sideline. Really having trouble breathing, just very winded. And so now he's back into the game. Number of players last week in that game against Fresno State had cramps, they were dehydrated. As Bobby Pezzavento comes in for Craig Oaks right now at quarterback. But it's still very hot near the Denver area this time of the year. Purify tripped up near the 20. Doug Heal, the outside linebacker, got the start this afternoon. Number 44 got him there. You know, even though Purify, I mean, he was on the sideline having trouble uh, breathing a little bit earlier. Even though he's okay now, I'd say get him off the field. As well as he's run, as much as you might need him next week, why not put, well, there they go. Put somebody else in for him. 174 yards on the afternoon. Nearly 10 yards a carry. And there's Oaks. Gingerly putting his pads back in place on the sideline. Chris Brown bounces off a of one. Inside the 20 to the 19 near a first down. Yeah, they're going to take the pads off of Craig Oaks and check him out here. Well, see, this is my trapezius muscle. I've been working on it for a long time. Chance to show off the guns, I guess, on TV, yeah. but that's that's not the opportunity he wanted. And it looks like it's, it's probably just a bruise right out there on the on his deltoid muscle on the outside of his shoulder. You know, you kind of worry when a guy is working his shoulder like that, it could be a separated shoulder, something like that. Doesn't appear to be that. Coming up, LeBron was not able to get the first down. Fourth and one here, Pezzaveno. Brown on the right side has it this time. And they'll move the chains. 8.29 left in the 73rd meeting between the Rams and the Buffaloes. Well, a lot of questions answered for CU today. A lot of questions asked of CSU today and how they're going to settle this quarterback situation because there's no substitute for experience, and the only way they're going to get experience is to be on the field playing. Look at the numbers on Pezzavento last year. Portland Johnson bouncing outside, inside, back outside. Touchdown, Colorado. Flag is down out at the 15-yard line. to bring it back the hold against the Buffaloes they're bringing this one back holding on the offense 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul repeat first down they played the fight song for nothing <laughs> I think that might have been Andre Garrod on the hold, it, it looked like, and we'll forgive him for that, given the way that this offensive line has opened up holes all day. Gerard, the 6'4", 320-pound senior from Houston. And if he wants to hold, who am I to tell him no? Purify wrapped up as soon as he gets the ball. Doug Heal quickly into the backfield. Heald and Adam Wade splitting time at that outside linebacker position, the strong side linebacker, and either one really, Sonny Lupik has a lot of confidence in. Wade still coming back off the injury, had the knee injury, only played three games last year, so he's still trying to work his way physically back into playing shape. Benno gives to Purify to the 20. Tony Calicione, the senior out of Yorba Linda, California, on the stop. And as we we talk about Sonny Lubick and the job he has done, it's one of the things that, that has allowed him, his success has allowed him to go outside of this area. We talk about Gary Barnett trying to concentrate on Colorado now, his strategy coming in. 
But Sony Lubick is able to get the kids from California, and maybe before the last seven, eight years, they would not have been aware of the of Colorado State or the success. So you walk into a kid's house who's living in San Diego, and you say, we want you to come to Colorado State, and they say, who? But now Colorado State, a lot of winning records. They've been in bowl games. They've got championships. It makes recruiting a lot easier. On third and 11, Bobby Purify steps out of bounds at the seven-yard line and gets the first down. It'll be first and goal from there. Again, up front, Wayne Lucier and Andre Garot just powerhouse. You know, here's, here's the guy who has really carried this team, and at the end of the play, it looks like he almost gets his legs taken out. At this point, if you have anybody else to put in there, I say you take him out because you're going to need Purifor by next week. But I don't, they might not have anybody else other than Chris Brown to, to play in there. 191 yards on 21 carries for Purify and getting a breather now. Brown straight up the middle, loses the football, but he's already down. They wrestled him down. Of course, Portland Johnson was in there just a couple of minutes ago. At this point, I would get Purify off the off the field if I was a coach. Got to remember too, though, that Chris Brown was the starting tailback. Right. Uh, you take your choice. Purify's had the great day today, but he's not necessarily the number one running back. He might not be, but I say performance speaks, and the way that he's played today, I think he deserves to be the starting tailback next week. Purify, Brown, Johnson, and of course Marcus Houston coming back at some point. Second and goal. Brown. Not this time. Just inside the three. They just beat him up ball. Every quarter, look at what Colorado has done throughout this. I mean, they've just been solid and consistent from the first quarter through now in the fourth quarter. It looks like the fourth quarter could end up being their most productive quarter. Chris Brown, 19 carries, 118 yards. You add that to the total for Purify, that's a heck of an afternoon. Here goes Brown again. Down to the goal line, he's not going to get in, though. Adam Wade made a nice tackle. Listen to the crowd. Any question as to what they want to do on fourth and goal? I think they're saying go. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Barnett sends Bobby Pezzavento back under center on fourth and goal. Brown on the right side gets their touchdown. Whenever they need a big play, CU always goes to that right side. Gerard, Rogers, Graham, and just power it in. You like that? Going for it on fourth down, fourth and goal? Yeah. Is the score the way it is? At this point, I, th I think you do. Because you could kick a field goal. I mean, there's no way to get around that. The implication people are going to say, oh, you're trying to run up the score. I say you go for it. And they've been running the ball throughout this entire quarter, not throwing. Extra point up and good for Jeremy Flores, who has been very good this afternoon, too. The Buffalo celebrating. Forty-one fourteen, your score. With 4.33 left. Colorado State, Colorado. Rocky Mountain Showdown. Dexter Wynn able to return this one. First time in a while that they have been able to return a kick. Cutting back still on his feet. Loses a few yards at the end and all of that just to get back to the 21 yard line. Corey Alexander makes the tackle. Pacific Life game summary coming your way right now. You look at last year what Colorado did and how they ranked. I mean, the numbers, Gary Barnett doesn't want to look at this. 82nd in offense rushing, 77 scoring, 104th, 99. Not what he wanted, but today, very impressive. Over on the right side, 321 yards of rushing offense alone. 416 yards of scoring 
offense, 144 passing and 257 total defense. A very, very good job for CU, and this is what they'd like to see all year long. Bush back in at quarterback and almost throws the interception. D.J. Bush, it was tipped. Joey Johnson, number 43, got a hand on it. So Bradley Van Pelt was in in relief of Bush, and now D.J. comes back in. And I would imagine that D.J. Bush is going to be the starting quarterback. It's going to be hard to keep Bradley Van Pelt off the field, though, because he is so dynamic and he can make plays. But as far as predictability, stability on the offense, I think they have to have Bush as the starter. Dwayne Ruff, senior out of Denver, Mullen High School right here in Denver, now in at tailback. Down goes Bush, throws it away before he gets sacked and guess who Jay Sean Sykes Jay Sean Sykes he lined up with his hand down on the line guess he what? loves to do it uh, they throw the penalty flag because of what you just saw the yeah. celebration by Sykes you, you can't stop your feet conduct, dead ball foul. unnecessary celebration 15 yard penalty now I think the NCAA has gone a little bit overboard with the celebration thing but the reason that they do it is because when they started this three or four years ago when they stop it nip it in the bud when a guy celebrates they don't get the brawls the bench carrying brawls they haven't had one in four or five years and so they think if they keep a tight rein on the taunting then they won't have the problem but I think a guy's got to be able to stomp his feet every now and again if he gets a sack well, the key when you talk to officials is whether or not someone calls attention to himself and Sykes after the sack with the, the exaggerated foot stomp I guess they they deem that excessive and that's the third time this afternoon is descended. first down Bush to throw time over the middle through the hands of Joel Dreesen and What's going on with the Dukies, John Saunders? All right, Terry, you're an ACC guy, so I know you have your eye on this one. Florida State sleeping on defense here. Dee Bryant back to pass, finds Chris Douglas, and watch him pull away from the secondary of the Seminoles. Takes it 78 yards for the touchdown. They missed the point after. Duke up 6-0. John, take a snapshot of that. That just doesn't happen. Of course, Florida State said earlier has lost only twice throughout their years in the ACC to Virginia and NC State. Down to Duke early here. Dwayne Ruff out of the backfield. Bush throwing a little bit wide that time. Do you think the officials might throw a flag on you for calling attention to yourself with that sequined outfit you're wearing? Well, I put the jacket on over it. I thought it was okay. It's very subdued. It is very muted, but I can still see the sparkle. You got a whole season ahead with this guy, guy, <laughs> folks. Can you believe it? <laughs> Amount of abuse straight ahead. Third and ten, with just under four minutes left. Bush over the middle. Nice catch, Eric Hill. And sophomore out of down Denver. hard. He did. He got hit. Sykes again in the backfield. Nice push. He delivers this ball. Very accurate pass over the middle, man, but he gets walloped at the end of this play. Caught him right in the chin. That'll make you lay down and say, Mommy. So it's up at the 48 yard line of the Rams now. And again, 336 and counting, you're, not, you're realistic. You're not going to come back in this one as this goes right through the hands of Chris Pittman. They throw to him for the first time this afternoon. But if you're DJ Bush, trying to get some positive experience out of this game, and then you want to leave this game with some type of confidence that was there early, settled down after the first interception. He sure did. He did a good job of coming back. And you know, the good news for Sonny Lubick is he got to see D.J. Bush and Brad Van Pelt in action, get them some experience. You know, the, the irony of, of this score, 41-14, you say, well, this is a blowout. This doesn't help the rivalry. You look at two. Oh, and down goes Bush. Oh, Michael Lewis had a clean shot at him. If he gets up from this one, he's a tough customer. Good job of holding on to the football right there, too. 
man. Safety blitz and Lewis just pounded DJ Bush. Listen to this in real speed. Man. Whoa, man. Well, even the guys in the truck are cringing at yeah. this point. Who wants to get hit in the back like that? Jack Graham, our producer today. Norm Samet, our director extraordinaire. Over the middle, caught at the 45 by Eric Hill. Second catch of the afternoon. Same route. It's still going to be about three yards shy of a first down. Medford Moore on the coverage. Well, I think at this stage in the game, you do go for it on fourth down. Yeah. What if they did bring out the punt team? <laughs> fourth and a long two, they're going to call it. Short drop. There goes Bush. He's got the first down. Design play, one that you may see Bradley Van Pelt run throughout the season, but Bush able to pick up the first down on it this time. Well, I started to say a minute ago, the irony of this score, 41-14, you think, well, how can you have a rivalry when one team blows out the other one like that? You look at two out of the past three years, that's basically been the score. CS CSU beat CU 41-14, then CU came back and beat CSU 42-14. Now it turns back around to CU. Now, last year it was a four-point game, though. True. New pressure, Bush gets it out to Ruff out of the backfield. He's close to a first down, maybe just a yard short of that. Heck of a game last year. It yeah. went down to the wire, and the big plays by Colorado State made the difference. 321 yards on the ground for Colorado. Man, that is gaudy. They had 66 rushing yards last week against Fresno State. Time out. Yeah. 129 left, and Sonny Lubick wants to talk it over with his quarterback. Back to game in a moment. Score by quarters, the 14 first quarter points critical for Colorado this afternoon because traditionally they have started slowly, come on strong, but today they started right out of the gate. Jay Sean Sykes, number seven, going to get there first. Not going to celebrate this time very much. <laughs> no. This is a moment ago on the Colorado sideline. This has got to be the worst part of being a coach. Ah, you take it well when it's a W. He's got to feel awfully good after the week that Gary Barnett has had. It's one complete out to Revstock, and that's short of a first down. I mean, it's been a tough week for you. The criticism that they lost to Fresno State, the criticism that he blamed his Oaks, the quarterback, for that last play, the criticism about Marcus Houston and his groin injury. I mean, it has been a tough, tough week for Gary Barnett, and I think he needed a win like this, a decisive win like this, to kind of clear the air. By the way, that last time out was taken by Colorado. This one taken by Colorado State. Might be a cold shower on the sideline, but uh, feels just fine right now. Yeah. Barnett. While we have a moment, today's Chevrolet players of the game. Henri Childs, Colorado State, Bobby Purify of Colorado purify with 191 yards including the 18 yard touchdown run early this afternoon in recognition of their efforts Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each school's general scholarship fund Childs with 82 yards on the day and a touchdown catch seven yards earlier in this quarter and purify the offensive line doing their job for Bobby Purify throughout the afternoon, but he had some terrific runs after the initial spurt. And see, you discovered they have in Purify a really big time back. If, and let, I don't, the way he was running, this doesn't look like an aberration. This just looks like the kind of skills that he has, and he can do this week in and week out. And for CSU, they needed to find out if Childs could play. They didn't know he played as a freshman at, at Kansas State, but they, they haven't seen him play in two years, and so they got that question answered as well. Unknown quantity coming into the game. You're right, very much. Fourth and one. Bush throws up top. Repstock down there, but it's picked off. Intercepted in the end zone. Roderick Sneed on the coverage and the pick. And that's one where 
Eric Bush didn't make a good throw up there, but I think Pete Rebstock could have helped him out a little bit more. Might have had a chance to break up that pass. But it's all a moot point at this point. Sweet victory for Colorado. All the pressure that you just talked about in danger of going 0-2 for the second straight year. They hadn't done that since the late 70s, since 79. And also, they were in danger of losing to Colorado State for the third straight year. That hadn't happened since the early 30s. But the Buffaloes with an impressive win this afternoon here in Denver, 41 to 14. Going to be your final score, Gary Barnett, in his third year, quieting some of the critics. And he had a lot of them earlier this week. He sure did, and I, they needed a game like this to answer that criticism. Sonny Lubick will be going back up to Fort Collins and rethinking everything, evaluating his players, finding out what good things they took from this and what they need to learn from. There is Oaks. We hope that his shoulder is not too badly injured. He'll be able to play next week. That'd be the one negative to come out of this game a if he were game. badly injured. Didn't look like it, though. Looked like no. he was just banged up a little bit. They put the ice on, so... Barnett gets the win here in the Rocky Mountain Showdown. Oaks is going to travel over to the other sideline. Plenty of friends on these teams. Guys who went to high school together, grew up together, played in Pop Warner football together. Sonny Lubick starting the year 0-1. Colorado now even up at 1-1. 41 to 14 and maybe more impressive than anything else the fact that Colorado found its ground game here they found their ground game and hopefully they can take it to San Jose State with them for next week's game and of course the Big 12 season begins 41 14 your final for Reggie Rivers I'm Terry Gannon hope you enjoyed this one right now we go to Times Square Stadium and join John Saunders All right, Terry, thanks a lot. As you mentioned, it gets Colorado to one and one. More important for Gary Barnett right now. Finally gets a win against Colorado State. Right now, bonus coverage. The defending national champions of Oklahoma taking on Air Force. Let's go there and join Brent Musburger.